fly without boarding pass Couldn't catch me, I'd be moving fast Call me a shooting star Let me know who you are Flying up in a bar Wish on a star Time to show them who's in charge Call me a shooting star Said I might be big in a game like she went and got them breast implants I said I'm moving too fast, didn't even get a glance I'm ready to eat up track like I'm seated in a restaurant yeah. If you have swag like mine, you know it's best to flaunt yeah. We aren't, hating because you aren't Shining like it's Dion, drop like Kings of Leon Shooting stars across the galaxy I stand out so don't be mad at me I'm with my strategy When I turn up, they know what just have to leave Shooting stars across the galaxy I stand out, so don't be mad at me In for your trade, I'm with my strategy When I turn up, they know what just have to leave Yeah, 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 shoot, shoot, shoot Yeah, 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 shoot, shoot Yeah, 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 shoot, shoot people welcome to Tottenham away Spurs 2 Luton 1 it's the post-match live show I'm joined with Dan from Hotspur Hood Ashmatic from Spurs Kings Adrian from the Die Hards Tottenham away group make sure you like and subscribe to all these boys channels I'll put a link in the thumbnail after or during the show I'll put it in there so you can find them but other otherwise listen three points plenty to discuss as always um <laughs> The first time I've heard booing at half time. I'm not gonna lie, I heard booing at half time, but at the same time, celebrations like we won the World Cup at the end. So it's it's, it's such a pendulum at Tottenham. It's like extreme this, extreme that. Mm. But look, we've got the three points. We needed the three points. We'll talk about it. We'll discuss the game and all the talking points. Dan, how you doing, brother? You good? Oh, I'm all right, mate. After watching that today, but I'm all right. At least we got a win. Yeah, exactly. We got the win. Ash. How you doing, bro? You good? Yes, brother. I'm good, man. I'm blessed. Um, about to shake a leg, you know. Sometimes you just have to move your body, um, you know, have a bit of a life, get out there and um, enjoy, enjoy it while you can, you know, because you don't know how long you got. So, yeah, I'm about to shake a leg a little bit later. Birthdays, of course. Birthdays. It's birthdays. <clears throat> Ash, Ash is going raving. Ash is going raving. Um, birthdays. It's birthdays. I'm irresponsible. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever code you want to use, we'll go with oh, birthday. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Just, just um, go and drink some lemonade, yeah? Yeah, you know, yeah, a little lemonade. Lemonade yeah. popcorn. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Adrian, are you out tonight? Are you out and about? Are you you're on, the, you're on the clubbing scene or? <laughs> I give up clubbing a couple of years ago, you know. I mean, like, I'm glad to be in such illustrious company, you know. Well, in Fob Spurs fans, to be honest with you. Uh, happy with the three points. Not happy, not happy with the performance. There's lots of things I could critique here that I'm not happy with at all. But uh, yeah, and it, and this has been this has been coming, this has been coming. I've seen these sort of signs, like you know. And I'm always a glass three quarters full person. So, uh, but I'm just well. I'm going to ask you guys opinions of things when we get into it, you know. But glad to be on with you guys, and uh, you know, I'm sure we'll have a good show as they always are on a Saturday. 100%. Sorry, I'm just sending some images to my screen because I forgot to upload them. Um, yeah, look, let's let's get into the game. Let's 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 go for it. By the way, everyone watching the show, I'm, I'm not going to go for every single person and say hello because there's so many. We've got almost 150 watching already. So, And Ash has not got too much time on the show, so I don't want to spend time saying hello to everyone. But hello to everyone in the chat. Big up to Elias, new channel member as well. Thank you for becoming a member. Everyone in the chat... Enjoy the show. Make sure you comment and we'll discuss. Uh, look, first of all, happy Easter, man. Happy Easter to anyone who celebrates Easter. Happy Easter. Mm -hmm. I want to start on this because it happened before the game and then we'll get into the game, right? Just, just, we won't, we won't spend too much time on it. I just want to get everyone's kind of thoughts and feelings. So before the game, there was a banner across the road from the club shop. No club for old fans. It was a kind of protest banner. This is where the, the Levy Out protest used to be. Um, but as you can see, like hardly anyone's there. But across the road, we queue for the club shop, going around the building, all the way up mm. along the West End. So everyone's happy to be on that side of the road, just not on this side of the road. And on the 65th minute, um, the fans or some fans stood up and turned their backs on game as a form of protest this is this is a a video that Iggy took protest for the seniors fans have turned their backs towards the pitch on the 65th minute Dan <clears throat> is this all just a waste of time or is this something you think is going to keep happening each week each week and get bigger and bigger um or have you got something else you want to say? And let's, let's keep it brief so we can get onto the game. But we should cover it because it, it's something that happened at the match today. <clears throat> well, I would have thought of a, a normal club and a situation like that. It would start something off. Well, it wouldn't even have to start something off. There'd have already been not just hundreds, but a load of supporters there already. And sadly, with Spurs history, you know, you, you can keep on doing that as much as you want. And... I don't think it has spiked, kicked nothing off, basically, sadly. But fair play to the people who do. Yeah, yeah, fair play to those that do try. Um, Ash, what's your thoughts on it all? Um... I just think that's the way this particular supporters, our fan base, how that's how they like to protest. <laughs> Whether we can withstand it over weeks, over a long period, is, is yet to be seen. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, like, like you saw that clip with the banner, um, from outside, there was no one there, but like, I think in numbers, people are more like sheep, you know, if someone else is doing it, they're more likely to do it. But to stand out in front of someone in the public, yeah. it's a bit like all eyes on me, like people don't want that. It, it's like, you're actually calling it out. Do you know what I mean? You're being brave. You're being on the, on the front line. So a lot of people aren't built like that. I think we've got a different type of um, different types of fans, and if that's the way they want to protest, there's nothing wrong with it. But whether we could withstand it, that's where I have my questions on. I, I'm not too sure whether we will go the distance, and then or if that is a big enough protest that you know the board look at it and think, oh yeah, you know we're going to make a change. I think the fans are really unhappy. Do you know what I mean? Because Fans are still going to the game. It's not like they're calling for the chairman's head or anything. Do you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I, I just see it as, you know, it is what it is, man. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see if anything comes of it. Mm -hmm. 
Adrian, I don't know if you know, but he's also now, what he's done is disabled fans in the mm. premium section, all the disabled fans, they're allowed to have a carer that comes with them and the carer comes for free. Well, now the carer has to pay 50% of a, of a ticket now to be allowed to come in to care for a disabled yeah. fan in the premium section. So that on top of the elderly fans uh, concession being taken away. What, what's your thoughts on it all, Graham? And what do you make of this protest? Is it going to get anywhere or is it just that? I don't know. I, I don't understand the issue with the lack of protest. I mean, I think it's it may be we might just have a strange demographic fan base. But but on that, th you're talking three million a year, right? Three million a pox a year. All right, I'd love to have three million quid. Don't get me wrong. Right. But how much did we save in Harry Kane's wages when we sold him? 16 mil a year? 20 mil? And the club are worried about three million people, and there should not only be concessions for old people. What about the future generations? What about the legacy of Spurs fans? What about the youngsters? The youngsters should be given concessions as well. It seems that we, we've we've stepped forward in the right direction. The last few transfer winners, we've done well. We've progressed. Everything's improved. We've improved the coaching staff and all this. And every time, like we take one or two steps forward. Levy and the, and the admin side, the money side of the club, we should say, right? They shoot themselves in the foot. We always know there's going to be a bad PR blast, right, with Tottenham. If there isn't one happening now, it's it's about to happen, right? I, I just think it's a disgrace, an absolute disgrace. I've always wanted new owners. I haven't been particularly, like, bothered about Levy in or Levy out. That's not really bothered me. I've always wanted new owners or people to invest in the club and clear our debt. Then we can progress, you know, it better. You know, we're not we're not shackled by debt as such. But this for three million quid, it's just an absolute disgrace still. A disgrace. I agree. I agree. Um, but if fans don't do something about it, then he's gonna get away with it, which is kind of how it's looking to me. But all right, <clears throat> let's see where it goes. Um the game itself, starting lineup, we saw uh Werner come in for Brennan Johnson and we saw Dragusin start with Van der Ven on the bench. There were the two changes from the last game. Basuma started again and so did Kulu. Two players that fans wanted to see maybe changed. I don't know. Uh, the final score was 2-1 to Spurs. We did win the game. <clears throat> and overall, it's fair to say we deserve to win it based on what we did with the ball. Uh, we had 17 shots to their seven, four on target to their three. Uh, double the amount of passes. We had three clear-cut chances. They had none. Mm. Uh, the only thing they did better than us was have corners. So in terms of creating, we outplayed them. But <laughs> obviously, stats don't tell you the full picture because a lot of fans were booing at half-time. I could hear it on the TV. And it's the first time I've heard booing um, at half-time. I don't know what they were booing, whether it was the manager, whether it was the players, whether it was just this kind of build-up, this build-up of... Um, the performance is not being up to spec, but we went one nil down, guys, in the first five minutes. Um, and I think this sums it up. There's a clear pass across to Chong at the back. No one's gone to the player. Um, and he's got a free pass. And I do question the body language, the sorry, the body shape of Dragosin. This is exactly what he did against Fulham, by the way. He doesn't close down the man and he doesn't put in a block. And this is actually something that worries me. That's the mm. second time I've seen Dragosin do that. I'm not blaming Dragusin for that goal, by the way. It started when Kulu lost the ball up top. So, But Dan, that first goal, have we got a problem with defending under this manager and with these players? And I'm genuinely asking, are they being coached to defend or is his idea of defending keep the ball? That is how we defend. I think our defence is absolutely shocking, mate. I mean, it's definitely... <laughs> the biggest joke of it is we've actually got a worse record for defence now than we did with players of half the quality under Conte. Yeah, it's true. Our defence is actually worse. Now, if you actually put it player for player on paper and everything, that is a pretty solid defence. Mm. But the way the way Ange plays football, we're going to concede 95% of the time. Nearly every game we're going to concede because we've done it all season. Yes, I understand playing... Angie's plan A needs to get better because that is his plan B. This is, the, I keep saying it, this is the premiership. This is not Celtic versus whoever. This is not like out in Japan or Australia or whatever. This is the premiership. 
And we keep playing like that, especially with Basuma sitting there who's meant to cover him. We're going to concede and keep on conceding. And we're going to have to play games. You score three, we score four. And we haven't even got the quality to do that up front. I don't like this inverted wingers crap anymore. I've had enough of it. Because again, Udoji got caught out. Basuma, absolutely horrendous. And Porro, out the way again where he's inverted. We are totally getting opened up on the flanks every time now, without fail. But this defence could be really something good. But the way we change place... It's not that let, defense, is it? Let, 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 me, let me ask you something, Ash. Right, oh, mm. Dan's clearly like you know, and I, I kind of agree with him. I've, I've got questions about the way we defend. I do. Um, mm. When Van der Ven starts, and Poro mm. and Adogi, Vicario and Romero, we've not lost the game this season, right? Okay, we didn't lose today. We didn't lose. But that stat is it? Is it? Is this just down to Van der Ven not starting that these things happen, or? Is it deeper than that? Because I look at this and, I, and all I ask myself is, why is Dragusing closing up his body shape and protecting his nuts? If that's Romero, Romero stands his ground. He either goes in for the tackle or, or puts a block in. Van der Ven definitely puts a block in. But Dragusing stands off. Pepe Sars, like ball watching. Yeah. And then you've got two players marking one man. So mm. is, this, is this, in your opinion, Ash, is this coaching... Or is it players doing what they want, not what the coach says? Or is it a combination of both? Or, or are these players not good defenders? I think they defend reactive and not proactive. I think it's a bit of both of what you said, though, if I'm being totally honest. But I would say that sometimes defenders, they need to smell it before it happens. Do you know what I'm saying? They need to know, like, OK, if I stand in this position, like you said, the body shape was awful. But I remember... It was it the last game when the ball hit Jacosun in the nuts and he's like, ooh, and he fell on the floor. I was like, I don't know if that crept into this game now. And all of a sudden, man's like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a bit nuts. It's a bit awkward. Because really, if you're a defender, you want warriors on the pitch, man, that are going to throw their body on the line. Like, they're getting to war. You see what I'm saying? It's mad, though, because obviously, we will cool our pants down, with our trousers down, in the first mm. two to three minutes. That's when it happened, right? So yeah, it was yeah. like, normally we want to start fast. We're not starting games fast enough. We start fast. Blah, blah, blah. So all of a sudden, like what Dan's saying is facts. You know, we get the wingers, the, sorry, the fullbacks, and we invert them. So they high up the pitch. But what that means is when you've got a Mickey van der Ven, he's able to recover. And not only just to recover, he's able to throw his body on the line and make those last ditch tackles where he just, you know what I'm saying? He defends like a warrior. So it's not even just like, oh, he's a... I don't know, a road runner, you know, meet me. And he just gets down there. He actually does do those last ditch tackles where it's just crazy. But I think when Basuma is obviously covering your doggy, the distance, because I didn't see the game live. I actually, no, I saw the game live, but when I switched it over, we were already 1-0 down. I was like, what? already? How have I missed this? I was coming from a kid's party. I was like, what? I re- I'm just five minutes late. Oh my, yeah, I couldn't believe it. But I think... When I looked at the um, the replay, they were doing at half time. They like showed the goal again. I, I was like, "All oh, right, the distance between Basuma and um, Townsend, thirty five years old, by the way, mad." Like, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's cold, it's something. like it's crazy, isn't it? I ex Spurs man as well. At that anyway, I don't think he gets close enough to him. Number one, and then when he puts the ball into the box, yes, you're right. Saw is actually ball watching, so. We need players, our defenders, to do defensive stuff, if that makes sense. Because I don't expect Basuma to be <laughs> mad thing. I don't expect Basuma to be like a fullback. <laughs> you know, that should be the new like, you know, you get the stickers on WhatsApp. <laughs> you start saving. But yeah, like I digress. I just I just think like oh what what they did was clever because when the ball came into him, what I saw was their striker. I forget his name. Um, what's the what's what's Luton's striker's name? Morris. Morris, what Morris does, he actually blocks um Poro. So he kind of uses his shoulder, blocks Poro, and then that gives their attacker, the guy who scored the goal, a chance to take a touch and then put it back into the net. 
So I give Luton a little bit of credit for, for you know, creating that opportunity so quick off the back. And even Barkley, when the ball comes to Barkley, for him to pick out that pass, you see, if that was Werner, he would have rushed it. You know what I'm saying? that that They wouldn't have, they wouldn't have created a chance. But Barkley, he's a top, top, top draw player. I know he's 29, would never look at him. But He's having fact, a good season, Blue. He's having a good season. Well, he's ha- he's having a bri- I remember when we were linked to him yeah, back in the day. When he was at Everton, I was like, was it Everton or I can't remember? Well, we were linked to him, and I weren't him bad. But I think he's mature <laughs> as a player, and the way his weight of pass and the way he got his head up and picked my man out, I said, you know what? That was a well worth goal, goal, and we just got caught like a deer in headlights. We just didn't know what was going on. So for me, like bad defending. Um, we do get caught out quite a lot of the time because we do play this high-risk, high-reward football. But I blame, and I'm going to say this is going to be my theme for the show, I blame the front three for the, the poor start and the slow starts that's been happening with Spurs over the last few games. Anytime Spurs, we don't play too well. We've had chances. We've had chances to put in the back of net. But I just don't think the front three are clinical enough. And I, I've seen when we've, we're making chance, we're making opportunities. Sometimes it is the final third where we're playing a little bit too slow or that final pass isn't quite there. But for me, it's the front three that lets us down time and time again. But yeah, just to go back into your, without going too far, bro. I've, we're going to get onto the front three. I know, I know. Sorry, I went too far. Sorry, I, no, no, because I've been saying it for four or five weeks and the hate's been coming my way and now everyone's beginning to wake up to it. Um, a user, thanks for the super chat. He says, we should be putting teams like this away. We've got some big games coming up, and I'm worried. Who the hell mm-hmm. is the set piece coach? He needs firing. Um, Adrian, one nil down in about four minutes or three minutes, whatever it was. What what the hell is this defending all about? Like o- honestly, do you think this is down to coaching, or do you think it's down to just you know players switching off? I, I... I've I've seen this in the last few games. I put it down to our midfield not performing. When we played them first ten games, we had quick play. No matter what what two midfielders you picked out, Bentner, Corsar, or Basuma behind Madison, you you had we was moving the ball quicker through midfield. We was incisive, getting up there quick. Now, while I'm struggling, well, what was making me angry, particularly annoyed, was the fact that. You've got two inverted fallbacks come in t- to m- make numbers in midfield. So now you've got Basuma and Saar with them. That's four. And yet, and yet, Madison still has to come back and pick the ball from deep. Who's not doing their job? Who's not doing their job there? I thought Basuma showed a couple of flashes a day up forward a bit and all that, but not much. Madison was flat. You could have subbed all three of the midfielders. They were crap. I oh, actually, guy said to me, hey, what do you think of mate and I'm next to me saying what do you think about half time I said well I'll take I'll, I wouldn't have done what uh, Ange did but he got the win I said all I could suggest I'd say I'd move Kulisevsky into the number 10 I would take Madison off I would take Basuma off and I'd probably even take Sar off they're just not doing it they're not consistent and they're not doing it it's not that they're not good players but they need a bit more competition we need to look at bringing the midfielders in I mean Lacelso deserves a chance I know he's made a glass but he deserves a chance because he makes things happen. Ben Accor came on, right, and he made a difference. He always looking to drive forward. He always makes a difference. If they have four midfielders are fit, Ben Accor's my first pick over Madison, Saar and Basuma. And Basar has got, got credit in the bank because of his age, really, because of his age, right? So Basuma's got to start doing more or he's got to be dropped. It's simple because it's not happening. Most we know He's got to go. He's got most, to go, not just get dropped. Most, most games are like won and lost in midfield, aren't they? When have we when have we controlled a midfield? When we've got the goals and come back and all these other games, it's because we've got balls down the wings. It's not because our midfield's been brilliant. It's not. Our midfield's gone. It's shot from what it was in the first 10 games. It's not working. It's not working at all. And uh, I've heard fans scream for a number six. That may or may not be the solution. Or perhaps to have just a solely... See, the point is, we get back in the discussions there before, what is an individual's fan perception of what a number six is, a number eight is, or a number ten is? Well, that is irrelevant because our midfield is not performing. And we, we will always struggle. Luckily, we, we've got, we can produce that little bit of quality 
maybe one or two or three times in a game that gets us out of jail. We've done it. But our midfield's crap still. It's crap at the moment. Do, do, do you know what? Right, I'm, I'm a bit torn on this one. By the way, uh, thank you to a user again. He says, we had Gianni Vio. He was a set-piece coach. We were solid with set-pieces. We were. Bang on. We should have kept him. That's, that's the truth. But... Did, I, I can't. I can't. I'm kind of a, a bit. On, I'm, I'm. I'm more with Ash on this one. I'll tell you why. Mm-hmm. I think when you play such a high line, you're, you're, you're trying to squeeze the game. <clears throat> Where you're looking for midfielders is to keep possession of the ball, keep it moving. Because if you lose possession, that's when the counter attacks on. If the other team's set up for it. <laughs> but I thought Spurs today, as crap as I thought we were to watch, we got into that final third a lot. And we did create things, mm. but we can't finish. And this isn't the first time. And there's like times when you think if Kuda just makes that pass, we're in. Or if Timo makes that pass, we're in. Or if Sonny does it one touch, not two touch, we're in. And they don't do it. And honestly, I've, I've honestly or come it's, to or it's, a, or it's a pass. It's just over hit or under hit, isn't it? It's a touch. The, them little touches I've seen in games thinking, be, 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 and I've seen Sonny scores today. But his touch hasn't but, been. But Adrian, let me let me, let me let me let me finish, let me finish my point though. Right. Sorry. I've sorry. come. I've no. Sorry. I've come to the conclusion that the way we play, we're so heavily attack, <clears throat> and we're a bit naive defensively that you've got to make the attack count. If you don't make the attack count, you're going to get stung, and this is where we've been stung. Mm-hmm. And if we get stung, one or two before we score. Now we're on the back foot. We're, we're in trouble. So you've got like against Villa, we made it count, and that was it. We put them to bed. But I don't think, and I'm, honestly, guys, I don't think Brennan Johnson, Timo Werner, Brian Hill, Kulazewski, or Richarlison, I don't think any of those players are good enough to be in a front three system the way we want to go, where we want to get to. I don't think any of them are at that level because they're either inconsistent, they only do it against the smaller sides more than the bigger sides, or they're just not good. The only one that consistently turns up is Hudimin Son, right? He's the fourth top goal scorer in the league. He's four behind Haaland, and Son's missed six weeks of football because of the Asia Cup. Out of all the strikes in the league, Son is number two for assists, only behind Ollie Watkins. So there's Mm -hmm. evidence to say he turns up. There's quality. I think quality is consistency. If you consistently turn up, that that's that's quality for me. Mm. The others, the others don't have the, the others have no data to back them up. Like so, I, I, this is kind yeah. of so. I know you blame the midfield, Adrian, but I'm, I, I I lean a bit more with Ash. I think the front three don't cut it for what we're trying to do. What do you not think? When you're that when you're that happy that the defender got to the ball instead of your left inverted winger, whatever you want to call him, that you're that happy the defender hit the ball before he did, it shows how much trouble you got. Because after that first one Werner missed, shocking. <laughs> and then you see the ball come flying across to him, you just think, oh, sh- here we go again. And the defender. Well, well Dan, talk, the talk us through it. Dan, think, talk us through it. You think, Dan, talk, talk us through it. So we've gone one nil down, then we go up the other end. Uh, Werner's threw in on goal. And from here, he misses the target. If this doesn't help, we managed to get footage. Iggy was like a cameraman in the stadium today. This is, this is the best one. And that's not even a save. No, he missed the target. Yeah, no. Werner, this is what I say about him. The way he plays, I look on him as a poor man's son. He plays exactly like how Son used to and still does on the side. It's just, can he finish? Can he pass? No, he can't. But he basically plays exactly the same way Son does. That is why I call him a poor man's son, because he is. He's quite. He's good on his feet. He's fast. He can take it round the player. He's got the bottle to do it. And then when it comes to that final bit, he's he's worthless. I mean, he could have at least got the shot on target. That was harder to miss than not get on at least get on target. It's it was poor. And then when the crowd comes in and you see him standing by the post, you just think, "Oh God, here we go!" And thank God the defender got to it first because it went in the back of the net. Because if it would have been him, he would have probably put it over, even though he was only like three yards out. 
He, he did he, smash one over towards the end of the game from a ridiculous angle. I remember watching it, thinking, "Why are you shooting?" Ash, the, the, the front three, like you brought, you brought up the subject. I, I, I do agree with you on this. Do you think any of these players forget some? Do you think any of these players can be developed into the level we need? Bear in mind, we're trying to catch players like Saka, Foden, Salah. They're, that's the competition we're <laughs> up against. Do you think they can develop, or do you, do you or, or does your hand on your heart say? Do you know what we need? Better. We need to sign better. Now, what, what, what are you thinking? It's tough. I'll be real. It's a tacky one because we bought Johnson, so there's not much you can really. We can't go out and say like, "Oh, we're going to put him up for sale straight away." Um, we've got yeah, two. Ash, I'm asking. I'm asking what you would do, not what the club would do. No, I would. No, no, I. I would. I would reinvest. I would invest heavily on those wing forwards because we're not it's either you get i'll get two different pro profile players first of all i'll get a wide forward and i'll get a winger so a winger could take it down the byline it can go on the outside they can go on the inside do you know what i'm saying and then they can cross it they can do like loop and crosses like a parasitch or they can do the end style where we cut balls back or we whip balls across the six yard box etc etc I, I would I would honestly change the profile because you've got too many players that do the same thing, if that makes sense. Other than Kulu, Kulu's slightly different in the mode of his decision-making lets him down, if that makes sense. When he gets in the final third, it's like he, take, he takes too long to process, to, to know when to cut the ball back or to when to have a shot or to use a weaker foot, which he's quite good at. And so I think that's what frustrates fans a lot. I think with, with Brendan Johnson, what frustrates fans is that when we play mid to low block teams, he doesn't go on the outside, doesn't take his man on. Do you know what I'm saying? Werner and Johnson both need space in behind to attack. So essentially you've got two players. If you look at Tottenham's heat map, or not even a heat map, their players' average positions. Johnson and Werner are our highest players. The, they almost play identical because they, they're almost higher than Son. So I think taking Son out of this, if you've got Richarlison, you technically want a, mid, a, a, stri a striker that when you sting the ball into him, he can hold on to the ball and then your forward, your wide forward players are running in behind. Do you understand? But because Richie loses that ball, and I know he didn't play too much in this game but you're just talk, you're asking me a question so i'm trying to answer it i just think if he could look after the ball do a short pass and then ask for it again or that short pass he does the next pass is into one of our wide forwards then all of a sudden we're not losing the ball in the progression because that's when we lose high quality chances that's when everton were putting us under so much pr pressure because as soon as the ball comes into his feet we lose the ball and then all of a sudden it's a high turnover we're on the back foot all of a sudden. And then that affects confidence. I think confidence happens as, as early on as that. When you're trying to progress the ball up the pitch and you stick into your, your number nine that's dropped in the hole and he can't look after it, that's another problem. So then you look at your bench and you're like, right, okay, let me switch up. What do I need? Because people are like, oh, we need Richarlison to be in the box. We don't need him like, you know, deep in that pitch. But when we don't whip crosses like Perisic, when play, we haven't got like a, a player with a skill set that whips, Paul can do it, but yeah, he wants see, he's inverted certain times. Today, I thought he did well because he was playing, he was a bit wider today. He was whipping crosses and quite a bit. But generally, we don't have a man that can whip a ball into like a Richarlison. Richarlison, at one point, most of his goals were with his head, not with his feet. Do you know what I'm saying? It's only towards the end, he started to score with his feet and he picked up confidence, etc., etc. So I think, the profiles are a mix smash of, of the wrong kind of skill set for what we need in that front three. So if it was me and we and I had the and I had the chance, the only player that could probably get a save and grace is maybe Brennan because he is 22 years old. Mm. And I feel like he could possibly you could possibly get better. You could Kulu's only 23. No, he's 22, but 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 I know I hear that I hear that. But but to that I would say, at Nottingham Forest, Johnson was playing as a as a number nine. He wasn't always on the wings, and he looked like a different player. So I don't know if you put Johnson in a different position, he starts to perform a little bit better. I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm throwing it out there. So I'm looking. At, I'm comparing his Forest days to where he is now. 
So I don't know if that potential is still there. That's why I've got a question mark on him. He has got 11 goal contributions, but we need to see it, as you said, in the bigger games. That's where we need to really judge him on. It's like Kulu. So, he's, played, he's played the wrong way. Kulu is not an out-and-out -out winger. And if not. you're going to have an out-and-out -out winger to go down there that you want to cross the ball in, he's got to be on his right foot to cross the bloody ball. Kulu is better as an attacking midfielder. That is why Juventus got uh, Chiesa, dropped Kulu, then he got a space in attacking midfield central. Mm. And he played well doing that. Mm. When he played the, what, seven games for us as attacking midfield central, playmaker, whatever, I'd say five games he got right, two he was shocking. But he has to step to the left every time to put it on his strong foot and he just keep repeating it. But the defender's already seen it and stepped to the right. If anything, I personally think, and with this, he should be playing. He should be playing uh, Kulusevski more, like getting to push into the middle, inverted sort of thing, and not run as high up the pitch, and get Poro to overlap him basically and cross the ball in because he's the only one who can cross the ball. See, I, th I see, think Kulusevski's been played the wrong way totally. See, th th this is this is what I keep going back to, right? And I, and I update it every week, right, without fail, and it's, it's just to try and. This is this is where I, I I struggle to buy into that these players are good enough, right? So I've color coded the players. So Richie is green, Johnson's blue, Werner's red, right? Against the top eight teams, uh, Johnson has got a goal or an assist in three out of twelve games, and Richarlison has done the same. So that's basically uh, a twenty five percent return. So in seventy five percent of the top eight games, they've gone missing. The mid-table teams, Johnson one goal, Richie one. That's now 20%. So they go missing in 80%. So the top 12 teams, they only turn up in 25% of the games. So in 75% of these games, they go missing, which is why on Friday I said, I know one of them is going to score because we're playing a bottom eight team. Because look what happens against the bottom eight. Richard and Susan scored one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight out of 15. That's over 50% return. That's fantastic. Johnson, one, two, three, two goals there. Three, four, five, six, seven. Johnson, a 50% return. So these players against the bottom eight, they turn up in one in every other game. That is good. That is a good level, right? You can't knock it. But as soon as you get to teams that aren't in a relegation battle, you know, teams that aren't crap, I'm sorry. There's no evidence to tell me that they cut it. And look, if someone can put a different argument forward, do it. Prove me wrong. I want to be proved wrong. But I said, I, I said, watch them turn up against Luton and then shit the bed at West Ham. Because West Ham's in the top eight, right? <laughs> Even though they shut the bed against Newcastle today. My God, what a game that was. But <laughs> this is this is why I'm asking the question. Like, Adrian, do you think this front three, honestly, as fans, we want we want our players to do well. But when, when I show you that information. Or our front I, three, right it. I mean, the best front By the three, way, no. sorry, by the way, Adrian, sorry. I, I want to say as well, because I want to be fair, Kulusevski is now dropping into the same levels as those guys, by the way. Kulusevski is now dropping into the same levels. So he was ahead of them. He's now dropping into that bracket. And I'm a big fan of him because he's technically so good, but ange has got to find what he thinks is the best role from as an eight or a ten. You know, because he can do it, because he's a unit, he can do that. But back to the front three. Our best front three permutation this year was away at Burnley. And that was Solomon, Son and Kulisevsky. And, all right, we're not going to have to see Solomon until next season. But he did have a couple of cameo, cameo roles for a little bit on the right-hand side when he was taking players. And I thought, mm, you look good, but are you just a, a tricky winger or whatever? And then at Burnley, he got two assists and he showed great vision. And I thought, mm, there's a player there. I still need to see more of him. With with Johnson, Johnson, see, Werner, I wouldn't take him in the summer. Even for 10 mil, I wouldn't take him, right? Because he don't score goals. He's never going to score goals. And we need a front three that score goals. If we're ever going to think about winning the Premier League, we need goal scorers, you know, across the front three. And not players that just get you off the seat down the wing because if they've got no end product, and I don't mean assists, we need goals. Though. We need goals. Brennan, Brennan, Brennan Johnson's not scoring goals either. No, he won't. It's he top won't. 12. He, he doesn't. Now, with with Richarlison, 
although I don't think he's good enough, as we've got nine games to go, if he played those nine games and got four goals and finished with 13, see, we're stuck between a rock and up. I would keep him as a squad player because the squad's still evolving. We've got Velez to come in, right? And that's about it on the number nine. Son's not a natural number nine, is he? He's an inside striker, basically, right? So, so like, I would keep him on that. With Johnson, at least Johnson's got potential at 22. And so is Kula at 23, right? So, like, he's got potential. And it's just turning around. Johnson's having this little knack of having an impact on games. And I don't mind lucky players like that. And we'll see. And Angel obviously loves him. So, obviously, there's been talk on the training ground. Well, you've been there still. Uh, they just love his technical ability and all that. I want to see more from Johnson, right? I don't want to see him five yards out blasting a ball over the bar, right? Because that's what's not impressed me about him. He's missed sitters as well, right? But, uh, Werner, no thank you. He'd be the first one I out because the shutter seem to come up when he gets in front of goal. I mean, I don't know what it is. I mean, like, you know. The shutter's come up. <laughs> they do. It just seems to be blinded, like, you know. Look, I don't mind. I don't it's mind. Look, finishing. Strikers on goal. What I don't mind, a sign of a poor striker or an ego guy, a guy who wants good stats, looking, is one that hits the ball straight at the goalkeeper. Or right, sometimes you've got no chance. It might come off the goalkeeper and go in the net. I'd rather see the ball creep past the inside post or the far post, although Werner should have done better with that chance today, than someone just blase, just hitting it straight at a you know, goalkeeper. Oh, look at me. I've had a shot on target, right? I don't like that crap, right? I'd rather them try and, like, curl one in or do something like that, right? So, like, I don't I'm, – I'm, I just – look. You know when you – sometimes you see a play and the alarm bells go up and you – Werner is never uh, – there's just something – I just do not trust him. It's, don't get me wrong. We, we had quite a bit of joy on the left in the, in the early parts of that first half. We should have gone in – we should have scored three goals before we got into half time. But that shows – why? Well, why we are bad because we didn't score them goals, like you know. But uh, you know, I mean, like Werner, not for me. Richarlison, end of season, I'll judge him. Johnson, he's not going nowhere. The money we paid for him, you know, he should be oven ready for that price, but he's not right. But he's staying. Kulu staying. We know Kulu staying as well. And you know, obviously, you no know, Son staying. But I think Johnson has to go. Uh, sorry, Werner has to go. Werner has to go. Um, in a hype, <clears throat> you say Werner started the Champions League final in 2021. Har Harry Winks and Sissoko started the final in 2019, mate. <laughs> like, <laughs> where do you want to go with that? Um, <laughs> all right. Well, look, um, Werner missed that chance. But Spurs, to their credit, we, we, were, we were pushing. You know, Spurs weren't crap in, as a whole. We were creating something up top we just didn't know what to do with it when we got there and then um Hyun Min Sun uh he's hit both posts it was an unbelievable mm. shot to hit both posts um I think yeah Iggy got it as well and then Werner hit the rebound into a defender then it came to Pape Sar and he smashed it and then Luton Town cleared it off the line <laughs> Thank, thank God for Iggy. We've actually got video for it. <laughs> We're allowed to use. <laughs> um, Mate, go when Iggy, I saw man. that happen, I just thought it's going to be one of them games. When, mm. when I saw that, I just mm. thought it's going to be one of them games. It's just <laughs> going to be no matter what we do up there, it just ain't going to work. It did look like that when that happened. Dan, do you think course. it was? Do you think that was unlucky, or do you think it was good defending? I think you could go 50-50 on that one mm. because it was just blatantly unlucky with Son. I mean, you couldn't do that if you tried. Not even Messi could pull that off if he tried to, to make it hit the inside of the post, hit the other inside of the post to come out. You just, you can't do that if you try. And then the other, it was good defending as well, just getting in front of the ball. And not only that, Dan, it, it, not only that, I sent Stella a picture of the, one of the ball over the line. I don't know if it's going to come to that. Don't worry. I've got it. I thought that when you're yeah, thinking it's it. not going to be your day, you're thinking like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Jesus unbelievable as well. Christ. That was unbelievable as well. Yeah. Um, 
so event, event, eventually, after a bit of time, we did we did manage to get the equaliser. And um, whoops, sorry, earpiece nearly fell out. Uh, Brennan Johnson, come on, impact sub, mm -hmm. uh, put mm -hmm. in fair play. Did a nice one two. Um, I don't, I can't remember who laid it off to him. Maybe you lot can tell me. Cabior came off, didn't it? Cabior. Well, I'll show you. Look, Iggy's got everything. Iggy's, Iggy's, Iggy's spoiled us today. This, this, this was the equalising goal. I think that was. Thank God the defender got to it. Cabior, Cabior, yeah, yeah. Is that his name, Cabior? I just call it Pedro, isn't it? Pedro Porro. Yeah, they linked it up. The interchange between him and Johnson. So the ball, Johnson plays it into Poro. Poro plays it back to Johnson. Johnson fires it across into Werner and then it hits their defender and goes in the back of the net. Mm. Even That's even right. the defender's score tappings. We, 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 we don't like <laughs> shooting from distance. We've got to get right up to the goal before we shoot. That's uh, Ange this is Ange ball system. And the winner was <laughs> deflected as well, wasn't it? So like we... If you but say uh, you have to do that because that's that's like equivalent to us taking shots outside the box. Sometimes if you shoot outside the box, you might get a lucky deflection; it goes in. And we're not doing that. Enough, we are doing this tactic where we hit across the face of the goal, and then it goes in. Do you know what I mean? In this first half, just going back to the first half real quick, your doggy fired the ball across the box. No one was in the. No one was in there. There was no one on the back post. I see yeah, Saar yeah. do it. Fire across the ball across the face of the box. No one was in there. And I can't remember if it was Son or Werner that fired it across. And I was like, guys, we, that's our trademark. Why are we not at the back stick? Like, that's one thing I always, every time I play football, get to the back stick. That's what the gaffer says. Back stick. Someone needs to be in the back stick. Mm -hmm. So I was surprised in the first half that wasn't happening because I was thinking, well, we could have been, as you said, still two or three up by now. Do you know what I'm saying? Or Adrian, like, so... It was, Actually, it was you would you would have seen that, wouldn't you? I mean, like when we played, we won at Leeds and we won four one and all that, and like we had it got past the Doherty on the far post or something. Yeah, when yeah, we played yeah. with wing backs, you like you're so right. We always had a player running in at back post. Yeah, but we don't because we got inverted full backs, it's not happening. But Angie's system that happens if you go and watch Celtic, they often put a diagonal ball to the back post and there's someone there. Yeah. That's one thing I haven't seen a lot of the diagonal passes, like yeah, it just, doesn't happen with us. Doesn't happen with us, and I thought Poro was going to be doing that. I thought Poro was going to get on the edge of the box, do those diagonals. Then we've got a player because those diagonal balls are hard to defend against, especially if you're playing against a low block team. It's kind of mm -hmm. hard to kind of like stop those balls from coming in in open play. So I thought that's what we were going to be doing. But some of the wingers we have, we're not wingers. They're like we said, they're wide forwards. We don't really have wingers per se like that. Do you know what I'm saying? So it it was a bit it was a bit nuts to me. But a, a little shout out to Porro for there was no outstanding player today, but I thought it was about the pick of the bunch, Porro. He made oh. a great block. Well he got man of the match. He got player of the match. Did he oh, oh, yeah. oh I didn't know that. I didn't know. And right, actually, Paul, Romero again, I know he gets criticized for not moving the ball quickly when he's playing shotgun quarterback and all that. But he marshals the back for Romero and I thought like yeah he was solid. And I think He's making Dragerson's entry into the team a li little bit more comfortable. And I thought Dragerson wasn't that standing. It was just steady-ish. A couple of overhit passes or whatever at times. I, I think he did quite well with getting up the pitch in the second half. I mean, the second half Spurs did come alike because that first half mm. was just absolutely terrible. <laughs> I thought he actually, I thought he actually got, I thought he had a steady game today. Yeah, he had a mistake. Yeah, steady. But it, he was getting up the pitch. He ended up getting up the pitch with a ball more than Romero did. And it's usually Romero who goes up the other end of the pitch that bit more, isn't it? Dan, I thought Dragusa yeah, had a right game. Uh, I think, I mean, Adrian, one second. Dan, you said we came alive in the second half, right? Did Spurs come alive or do we need to have a discussion about this man and about this man? Because they got pulled off, on came Benson okay. Court, on came Gio. And a lot of fans that were at the game that I spoke to, they said to me that the game changed when Madison and Basuma got pulled off, and rightly yeah. so. That's what they said. What, mm. what did you think of that, Dan? Right. The first one I go with, Basuma, straight off. I've picked this man up big time, like, from when he came back from um, when we got him from Brighton, and I could never understand why Conte weren't playing him, because while he was at Brighton, by the top five teams, he was the most wanted midfielder in the Premiership, hands down. Liverpool were going to pay 65 mil for him. They turned it down because they wanted 80. Mm. We got him for 30, still at a century at that time, everybody thought. 
And I just couldn't understand why Conte didn't play him. I really couldn't. Now I do. I've seen five games out of this man where he has been quality, where he really has been good. And he used to do it at Brighton all the time. I mean, at Brighton, he, I remember one season that he totally wiped the floor with us in midfield, controlled it against City, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea. He, he was a false. And now, the way he's been playing since he got sent off that time, for me, if he carries on like this till the end of the season, he's my first man out. He's got to go. Because, again, with a goal today, if we're pressing forward that high, the idea of the anchor man basically there, DM anchor man, whatever you want to call his style of, is to come back and be the third defender or to stop it getting to the defence. What the hell is he doing? It's a lot a lot of people blame I, Basuma as well for exactly what you mm, said for the second goal that I, Wolves scored when we lost 2-1. They blame Basuma for exactly that goal now, as well, I remember. One bit in his defence, <clears throat> in the aspect of where he had to be today, like where he was when he got done, was because Adoji had gone missing again. This weren't a good game for Adoji again. That's two good games he hasn't done that. But you can cut him slack because he's had a pretty, he's had a solid season. But here we go with the inverted wing backs again, getting so far up the bloody pitch, the DM's now coming over to that side to try and cover it where a doji's nowhere to be seen, where a normal left back or even left wing back would be. Now it's totally naked in the middle, basically. You've got Porro still stuck up at the other end of the pitch because he's playing inverted, and we are just totally open. But give me choice. I wouldn't have even started Basuma. I play Hoiberg there. Because I think Hoiberg is more effective as an out and out, just DM, anchor man, whatever you want to call him, than Basuma. Put Hoiberg there and just get the ball and kick it forward, mate. Just get the ball, protect the defence. Madison, again, same as Basuma, absolutely quality at the start of the season. Mm. Since he's come back from that injury, we've seen moments from him, and that's it. Today, he saw plenty of the ball. He had the ball at his feet enough times and it looked like the man just lost his imagination. He he had a terrible game today. And I think he done the I think Ange for once in a while, I was quite impressed with him for making the sub at half time, which I've been grilling him for from the last game and other games, which he doesn't do. And I think he made the right decisions. I think he actually got the subs right this time. Basuma was absolutely terrible and Madison was mm. Madison was just bad. Mm. And he hasn't actually been good, really, since he's come back from that injury. Because you've got to... I think too many people rate a player on that moment in the game. Moment. No, a game is 90 minutes. The only one who can get away with a moment is a striker. Because all he is there to do is put the ball in the bloody back of the net. If he goes missing for 89 minutes, but then scores that one that comes to him, striker's done his job. Everyone else needs to be in that game for 90 minutes. Yeah, Madison, he's Dan, been nothing do, do since we got him Basuma, back. Do you think Basuma has been a little bit overhyped? The reason I say this is because... Now, I'm going to go back to Winks at Spurs, right? When we played in Champions League against Real Madrid and uh, he was being compared with Iniesta and all that, you had to remember at the time that we had like Rose and Walker pushing down as fullbacks. We were pressing hard in midfield and all that. And sorry, Winks, sorry, Winks, Edwin, did you say no, Winks got compared to Iniesta? Yeah, that's what yeah, yeah. Yeah, he did. He did. <laughs> Who? Sorry, I, 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 I thought I heard it. Thought I never said that. No, no, you're not hearing that. things. You're not hearing things. It's true. Now, yes. I had a theory on Winks <laughs> whenever he turned, when the fan base turned. And I said, well, you've got this. With with R nine, yeah. We're, we're pushing. <laughs> No, we were pressing like mad under Pochettino, right? So Winks was getting room in midfield to do his stuff, and he was compared. And he had he had a good game against Real Madrid, Barcelona, and all that. And they were probably his best games he ever played in the Spurs shirt. Blah blah blah. Now I'm thinking when when Basum was at Brighton, there was an engine in that Brighton team. They were a very hard work inside, and, and he I was playing that, box to box, not DM. yes. And I think he was given a bit more room. I'm not saying he's a bad player; he's not. But maybe, maybe, you know, we're going a bit over the top on Basuma. If he keeps playing like this, you get rid of him. Or he's got to rediscover his form. 
There's when a player, a player there. Has 15 but, shit but games, like, one after this is another, I'm saying, you're not going This is the point. When our midfield's not on point, if Madison's not doing it and Basuma's not doing it, you want to rely on a young kid like Saar rather than Bentacore. Bentacore being my first pick in that midfield of his fit. Saar's been field. the most reliable. Bar today, and Bentacore yeah, being Yeah, and Saar's been games. reliable, right? Oh, let, me, let, me, let me ask oh, you. No, I'm going let's back ask. to the midfield. The midfield is our biggest problem. I mean, and so's our front three still. Don't get me wrong. I ain't got a problem with the back six, right? But I've got a real issue with our midfield at the moment. Because mm. if the I engine ain't working, I disagree. You know. I disagree. Fair enough. Ash, I, I disagree. Uh, let me just quick enough, super chat, then you disagree. Matt Coppin, big up. He says, big up, guys. Much love. Thank you, brother. Big up to you, Matt Coppin. Ash, why do you disagree? And I'll probably get pelters for this in the chat. I don't think this was Basuma's worst game. I'll be totally honest. I think he's played worse. Doesn't excuse yeah. him for not being um, critiqued today or in other games. Should he have been started today? There's an argument that he shouldn't have started. I'll be fair enough. I wouldn't be mad. If Basuma didn't start today, I wouldn't have been mad. I would have got it. I said, I think him on the bench, you know what I mean? It, it, that could work. Do you know what I'm saying? Because when we started Hoiberg, Hoiberg has stunk it out when he started. Don't mm -hmm. care what anyone says. Mm -hmm. Hoiberg looks better coming off the bench. Mm -hmm. Now, I was thinking, raw. if Madison and Basuma are on the bench, do we get the same level what you see from Lacelso and Bentacle when they come off the bench? You know, when you're sitting on the sidelines, you kind of see what's going on. You, you're, you're fresh legs. You've got more energy. You're playing against tired legs, tired opposition. And then all of a sudden, your level goes up. We haven't seen that from a Basuma. We have not seen that from a Madison in terms of them coming off the pitch. Now, when Son hit that chance and it hit off both posts, the player to win that ball back high, off the, high in the field was Basuma. Why? Because he was pressing like a madman. And sometimes we miss some of these little things that our midfielders are doing off the ball or more focusing what he's doing on the ball. But to be fair, and I, and I pick up you guys' opinion, I respect it 100%. The reason why I would critique Basuma is because he's not doing what he did in the first eight to nine games or six games, whatever you want to call it, in terms of being brave. Basuma's biggest thing for me, his biggest attribute is in the build-up. So when that ball comes into him, he wants it. He's showing for it. He's demanding. And then what he does is he drops the shoulder and he beats that press. And that's what sets us on the front foot. And that's how we beat teams. You know what I'm saying? That teams that are pressing us. Now, when we play mid to low block teams, it's a little bit different because they allow your centre backs to have the ball. Do you understand? And certain times, Madison's dropped back in the six. And I'm like, Basuma, if Madison's dropping back in that six role, you now need to kind of do the, the Madison role. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't know if it's a case where he's been scarred from the Man City game, the Luton game, the Wolves game. And he's thinking, right, I've just got to be a DM. I've just got to sit. I can't take no risks. But for me, if you're not able to take risks, then you basically lost Basuma. You might as well just be on the bench, my brother. Ash, yeah, but I mean. he's also looked well, I mean, good. He's also I, looked I, good. I, I want to ask Ash something on this. Brighton or whatever against low block teams when he's had time to like play the quarterback role, right? Basically, from the halfway line going forward. And when Brighton have gone on to win, everyone's gone, oh, yeah, great. Basuma's fantastic, right? But that's been against low block teams when he's been able to do that. Uh, look, I hear your argument. And like, I I half agree with it and half disagree with it. You know what I mean? But but like I I I'm just, I, I want him, I just want him to perform. Like in them first oh, one, games. one minute, guys, I want to ask Ash something, yeah. something on what you said. I want to ask Ash something on what you said. Right, Ash, is it, tell me what you think of this, right? Because yeah. I've been, I've 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 been thinking about this Basuma thing because I went to Arsenal away this season. Yeah, and in front of me, I saw Basuma. When I mean bully, I mean bully Saliba off the ball and almost slam dunk him into the ground and put away with the ball. Trust and me. the whole Spurs end erupted when he did that. Trust me. Like it, it, it was almost well. and 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 Basuma is a is a, he's a unit, right? <laughs> yeah. Not Basuma. Uh, Saliba is a unit. Mm. When I saw and Basuma's not a big guy, he's quite he's quite thin. When I saw yeah. him do that to Saliba, I thought, wow. We've got a number six here. We've got a proper player here. What I'm seeing now is a shadow of that. Of course. Do you I agree. Think, right, I agree. Do you think... Do you think... I've seen this happen to players like Emil Heskey, and I've seen it happen mm. to um, uh, players like uh, Darren Bent, where mm. they're at clubs, 
They're really doing well, but there's no pressure at that club. There's no expectation. And this is Wilfred what I Zahard saying. as well, when he went to United. He's come to Spurs. The first 10 games, there was no pressure at Spurs. Everyone was talking mm -hmm. about free hit, mid-table's fine. But we, 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 we exceeded expectation. Since then, it's been pressure. And now top four's on. And now we should be beating this team and that team. And, and when we get the band back together, do you, do you think that actually the issue we've got with Basuma maybe and, and some other players at Spurs is they're not big club players. They're talented. I just, think, I just think you put a player for competition for Basuma. Sometimes you drop him. Exactly. Sometimes you drop him, you put competition there and you're like, he's thinking, rah, you know what? My team, my name's not the first name on the team sheet. Also, psychologically, I think he's a competitive player. I think he needs that competition as well. I, exactly. I think him as a character, I see him, he's quite jovial, jokey. Da, 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 where da. was that competition at the start of the season, Ash, when he was good? He didn't have any. No, no, no. There was no pressure. There was no pressure, but like Madison never had no pressure either. Do you know what I'm saying? That, like, Saar never had no pressure. Like, there was no one had, I think he was calling Ange uncle, dad. Yo, that's dad over there. Do you know what I'm saying? Because he said, look. But the same, maybe Ash the same a place to Madison then as well. Because this, yeah, of course, 100%. Madison's, 100%, never, 100%. Madison's never played this for a big club. what I'm saying. I think if you look at Hoiberg coming off the bench, this goes back to my point. Hoiberg starting stinks starting. But let him come off the bench all of a sudden. Everyone's like, right, you know what? Hoiberg looks like a better six than Ben than Basuma. But we all know deep down in the build up, you can't touch Basuma versus Hoiberg. He don't he doesn't have that lateral movement. You see that tight control like in, in tight areas, in tight spaces. Hoiberg mm -hmm. ain't got that, my brother. I'm mm -hmm. telling you that now for yeah, sure. Off the bench, it depends what you want from the six. Adrian's also said this, right? It depends. Different sixes bring different um, capabilities. You see that man like Polina. Polina is a man that's more defensive, off the ball. He wins it like box to box. Like we love that. Yeah, right, right. Rare. But in tight spaces, you're not going to see a Polina dribble, drop a shoulder, agility wise, lateral movement. You know what I'm saying? Quick movement. That's the reason why we like Basuma. But when he stops doing that, then it's like, what's the point? When he's not being brave, what's the point? And where did he play at the start of the season? Where did we play Basuma at the start of the season? The six. He was the six. No, no, he wasn't. He was box to box. He was box to box. That is, he was in a six. That is, he was in a six. That's not a six. Pivot with Saar. him and Saar were in like they they took it in yeah, turns. Didn't but he? He's still a six. Oh, he's still a six. He's still a six. No, he's, he's not, not an out six. Box to box that's today. But listen, that's what. No, no, no. But Dan, that's your version of a six. In this system, it's called uh, and and still we'll break this down. Positional play, where one player drops out of the six and becomes an eight. The other six roll. The other eight rotates into a six. Do you understand? It's meant to be the three midfielders. They're not meant mm -hmm. to be static. That's why you see Madders drop back into the six sometimes to pick the ball up to progress the play. It's not meant to be like your traditional, this is your defensive midfielder, this is your right. centre mid, and this is your... Do you know what I'm trying to say? It's an inter I get that. That's the reason why... You why is Pursuit the only one ever back to cover that? Huh? Against Palace. Against Palace. He was he, he stood there the whole time and played DM. And that's this is what I was saying. That he's the only decent well, game. I was saying, I feel like when you take him away from the Basuma, then what's the point? He might as well not play. I'll say this. I'll say this. There was even points in the season where Romero had to come in as a de facto number six as a DM. I was saying this a couple couple of weeks ago um, that Romero had to do with that. But it was the 12th minute today, and I knew that we were in trouble with Basuma because Basuma got the ball, and I'm thinking. Turn on the pivot. You can beat that guy. I, I, I don't care who's in Luton's uh, midfield. You need to take on that man. And he just passed it backward. And I'm like, that's it. Basuma is in trouble. I think that was in the 12th minute. I knew we were in trouble. But I'm, I'm going to say this because it was in the chat. Murray, can, can Ash just say bye-bye quickly because you've got to go? I gotta leave, man. I gotta shake my leg, man. Ash, big up, up, chat, man. Big big up. Up. You're quality, chat, man. You're quality. Yeah, man. Every time. Guys, big up, I man. don't know. Yeah, mate, as always. All right, Spurs Kings up. TV, everyone. Spurs Kings Spurs. TV. Big up, Murray. Yeah. Every time. I'll yeah. try to get um, a Londoners um, ours soon, man. Yeah, big up, okay. everyone. Big up, Dan. Yeah, my brother. Adrian, I'll get you on soon. Still big up yourself. Enjoy the lemonade. Enjoy the lemonade. I don't know if this was mentioned earlier. Um. 
the first goal. The first goal. They have a little rant. We should have had a clean sheet. We should have had a clean sheet. And here's the reason why. On the NBC coverage, when they showed a replay from a different angle, from the from the keeper's angle, um, on the other from the other side, they had an opposite. They were showing it from um, let's say Kaminsky's angle. You look at it, our midfield. Since we're talking about our midfield, mm -hmm. those players were jogging. Still, people in the chat, they were jogging. But Suma, Saw, Madison, right? They should have been running to help out defenders. The reason why he was open because they were jogging. We did the first goal. I'm telling the truth. The truth. <laughs> they were jogging. They weren't we running. Have... They were Mario, jogging. I agree. And also, we had six yeah, in a box for their three. Never happened, bro. They were jogging. I yeah. was incensed. That first goal should never happen. We had we had six in our penalty happen. area to their three. Two of their six were Sonny, Sonny and Basuma in a box, actually, but they were more to... They were, they were tight. That was the beginning of the game. And Dragerson was put in the gloves, buds. They you know, were you know what I mean? so, They were running. I'm like, that is, that is unexcusable. Unexcusable. Mm. But, uh, yes, the defenders should have done better, but the reason they were outnumbered because our midfield did not track back. They were jogging. They were jogging. <laughs> that had me rolling today. That had me rolling today. Mm. What I'll say about this game there is... There are times, though, Murray, to be fair, where you know as a player you're not going to get back. Because you're too far. Oh, there was, no, there was no excuse. As soon as Kulu... No, I'm not an excuse. I'm just saying oh, there are no. times when it happens. I, I, yeah, I, I, but, but, but Rod, I Rodri and Declan Rice, they get back. When Yama, when yeah. he was at Spurs, he got back. They got mm. back. You need to hold ass. Quality players, they the fact, away, don't they? As you, you're right, though, Murray, because the fact that two of our players, Basuma and Son, were the ones in a penalty here, it tells you everything, really. Look at that replay. I'm glad NBC Sports showed Where was you your doggy? Angle. Where was your doggy? Huh? The doggy was up the other end of the pitch. He was the one who got out and the reason Basuma had to come back. Yeah, but, that, that's, yeah, but that, that's going to happen with inverted fullbacks. That's going to happen. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that's part of the system. Is that's why I don't like this inverted fullbacks crap. I, I don't I'm, like it. I'm going to say this too. I'm going to say this too. We got the three points. Right? And we deserve the three points. But I'm going to tell you this. We play like that against West Ham. And remember, I, on Monday show, I predicted we were going to lose to West Ham. We'll win this one. We'll lose to West Ham. If we play like that on, on Tuesday against West Ham, we are going to lose. We're going to lose to Liverpool. We're going to lose to Arsenal and City if we play like that. That's all I'm going to say. If we play like oh, that, yeah, I would agree. But I think VDV would be back for that game. One minute, let, one minute, guys. We've jumped ahead. We've jumped ahead. We'll get onto the West Ham game in a minute, right? So the score's one-one. Um, we spoke about the substitutions: Basuma and Madison coming off. We discussed about Madison and Basuma. Um, I want to quickly talk about Benton Court and the Celso who came on. Did I thought about if they, uh, yeah, we did, we did, we did the front three already. We can Being come back cool? to though. Okay. Okay. Benton Court and Lacelso. I I I thought Benton Court played quite well when he came mm. on, and I thought yeah. Lacelso was all right when he came on as well. Oh, yeah. Is there an argument to say that the next game start Lacelso and Benton Court with Sar? <laughs> you know what? I was think I was thinking that because they came in, and I know um, Ash brought up a good point. You know. People coming from the bench, you know, because even Johnson, I actually thought Johnson played one of his 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 best his best games. And you know, you know me, I don't rate Johnson, uh, uh, but but he made an impact when he came on. Yeah, he, he made an impact when he came on. Yeah, and so, yeah, I don't know doing that. And I don't so, rate him. So going, yeah, but he, to, he does that against the bottom eight teams. Like I've said it a thousand times, against the bottom eight, yeah, he will. You're right. Have an impact, yeah, yeah, no, but right. what was his impact? Well, he's got time to do it against better teams. He is only yeah. twenty-two, so yeah, but he's lucky. not. The thing is, he's not doing it against the better teams. That's my point. Yeah. Maybe he Lo will. Maybe. Lo Celso and Bentacore, when they came in, 
Um, it was it was a chance that we could have scored that beautiful pass in the box that Lo Celso did. Uh, and I was thinking the same thing. I was just like, gosh. Lo Celso Maybe saved our ass at the end as well, if everyone remembers, where we got totally caught out and he managed to get that ball out round and up the, uh, boot it up the pitch because the defenders got caught totally out of position. The goal was wide open for their one to come in and have a crack and he managed to get to the ball first. He actually saved us at the end. Yeah, 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 no, 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 yeah, I said right, because they could have equalized. That's what I'm saying. Like, people was like, yeah, yeah, we, but I'm like, they could have easily equalized the 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 the, the game um in the last couple of uh, would you would you start them against West Ham though, guys? That's the question. You know would what? You I'm gonna be West honest West? with you. I'm gonna be honest with you. The way the midfield is playing, big clubs, what they do, they say, Okay, you're not playing well, next man up. And you know what? If La Celso and, and Pentecost are going to play like that, why not? Why not? Maybe Busuma needs to get benched. Maybe uh, Madison needs to be play, uh, get benched. I know I just came on. Madison played like trash today. Mm. He, yeah. uh, especially the first half. Mm. I was like, what is wrong with you? He was as bad as Kulu. So, yeah, shake things up so these guys can say, I want my place back. That's what big clubs do, right? You, these guys think, oh, I'm Madison. My place is every week. I'm starting love every week. Basuma thinks the same thing. Saw thinks the same thing. Yeah, well, but why know? do they think the same thing? There's only one person to blame if that's how they think, and that's the manager. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, 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 to, to Ange credit, he was savage today because he took yeah. off Kulu. He was savage today, and he took off Madison. I know he was a little injured, but I also thought he maybe Ange thought eh, today's not his day. So for the first time, Ange was really savage today. He pulled Kulu because Kulu was trash uh, uh, um, today. Mm -hmm. So uh, so maybe if if he could continue doing that, say, you know what? Let me sort of so especially because, you know, we played Saturday. The game is on Tuesday. Let Celso and Bentecourt get some starting minutes. Shake things up. Mine. My, I, I, I agree. I agree, Mari. My first pick in midfield. If them four midfielders we know that we like the best are fit, Bentacor's my first pick, even over Madison. And when we're then going away to West Ham, and Madison can be a bit lightweight at times, right? He can be a bit lightweight when things ain't happening. He's not going to be one who's going to dig in for you, is he? Wow. You know. So I'd go with Bentacor and Saar, and then oh, that's going away. And actually, I like La Celso. He's made a glass. I, I, I bigged him up big time before he even came to the club. I think it's a bit too late for him to turn his career around at Tottenham, but you never know, right? And I'd be tempted to go that way, Bentecourt, uh, the Celso and Saar. But we're Wilkin. talking about players coming off because they've been playing because they haven't been playing up to standards. Are you telling me Benton Core has been up to standards bar today as the sub? I'm talking about the energy he brings you when things go wrong because he gives you drive right. and he pushes forward upfield. He will twist and turn. He's always looking, he's always looking no. to go forward and do that. Whereas in like, the past seven games, he's done that for 30 minutes and that was this game. In the past seven games when he has come on or when he has played, he's been as bad as Basuma well, and everyone. Um, that's got a point. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough, Dan. But we, we're trying to critique. What we're trying to do yeah. is fix, fix so a problem. So what do we change? When, so when we're we... doing a cr critique... On so you take players, someone off who's playing show track, us, not showing us what it someone the first else is team. doing it. That's what we're forced with, though, Dan. It's the same thing up front, right? Like, I agree, yeah. Bendigor hasn't been great. You know, I think he's a better player than the others, and I don't think he's been yes, horrible. I agree. I don't think he's been ho any worse. I agree with you. He may not have been much better, but I don't think he's been any worse. But I think that's the problem we have. It's the same with the front three. And this is what we're seeing in our midfield this year. It's not really who's playing the best. Unfortunately, we're seeing who's been playing the least worse, or you know what I mean? So now we're forced to make mm -hmm. selections we probably don't want to do. You hope that you'd get to make, when we had no, this, we this midfield this year, we hope we started to get it so that players would force their win their way in by playing better. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. we're seeing that this year, isn't it isn't happening, right? We're going to see who's been playing the worst. So that's why when Stell says, should La Celso play come in and play? I think everybody was thinking I think for Madison. Should. I had him coming in for Sar. I would have Benton Corliss also and Madison playing. But that's the way it is, right? We you could replace course, any one of the midfield three that started today. You could and it would be it would be valid. It would be yeah. they would be they sh they deserve to be taken out of the starting lineup, the three midfielders that played today. The based question on how for they've me been with Benton Core is 
is Benton Core actually going to be as good as he was? Because we all know after an ACL injury, no matter how many people don't want to see it, we don't I'd know. Say about seven, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say will. about he seven will, times. Yeah. I'd say he about will. seven times. Hang on, I'd say about seven times out of ten that destroys a player. Van der Ven, I mean, uh, what's his name? BBD. Yeah, this is his first solid season at Liverpool over about three years since he got that ACL injury. I've seen yeah, that. Mate, I've seen that serious. injury destroy yeah. players, and I'm not saying that's the player's Lowen. fault. Yeah, Lowen I'm not it. saying it's the player's fault at all. But when players get those sort of injuries, I'd say more often than not, they don't come back to half the player they was. So I'm hmm. thinking with hmm. with Benton Core, we're all living on a bit of hope here. Of don't worry, Benton Core will come back. He'll get his act together. Okay, but, but Dan, Dan, so. oh, Dan, if <clears throat> so to counter it. If mm -hmm. Madison isn't playing well and Basuma isn't playing well, and we're saying that Benton Core's not ready, who do we start? <laughs> we got we got to work around it. But I'm asking you we, then, we, how? We got to work around it. Well, What's the work today, around? today I would have rather started Hoiberg in front of um, in front of Basuma. I'm talking about West Ham. Would you would you would you honestly start Hoiberg or wait at West Ham? Over Basuma at the moment, yeah. I honestly would, because I think Basuma has been that terrible. And I think the thing we do miss in that defence, I totally Why get not start Ashton Sar in the six instead? instead? Why not start Sar in the six what? instead? Yeah, okay. Do that then. All right. I don't, so who do, do you I, know what? Still, so I'll be so honest with you. Who's Stick Mickey eight? Mouse there for all I care. That is how bad Basuma has been in my <laughs> no, eyes. No, no, no. Let's, guys, let's do this. Let's do this, right? Let's do this. We've got West Ham. Let's do it. We've got West Ham on Tuesday. Yeah. So we've agreed Sar's going to start in the six. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who's our eight? The Celso? Thank you, Paul. Bentancourt. Well, it's if we have to be, start yeah. Star, then Bentancourt. But I wouldn't yeah. start Star. How's about this? How's about this? Saar, Lo Celso, and then Kulu in the 10. I don't like Kulu said? in the 10, but... No. Saar in the yeah. 6, Benton, uh, Lo Celso in the 8, and then Pape Saar... Uh, sorry, and then Kulusevski in the 10. Kulusevski has been best in a 10 place. I've been telling everybody this for about 10 months now. He <laughs> is better as an attacking midfield central. And everyone called me crazy when I said about it. I said, watch a bit of Italian football and you'll learn what they did with him. And Ronaldo couldn't big him up enough. Uh, big him up enough. As do you like know what happened? Shadow line and that. Right. Yeah. Do you know what happened? If that doesn't work, on the 60th minute, on social media, get Masuma on. Where's Madison? <laughs> get <him. laughs> I know I missed the Kulu part because oh, I was going to go in on him. But now we're seeing what Juventus was saying, you know, because he's also a confidence player. But he's also inconsistent, man. He's inconsistent. Inconsistent. He's inconsistent. And that's why Ch uh, Chessa, Chessa was able to um, get his spot, like scoop it up as quickly, and they were able to offload Kulu because he is living on – Six month credit because that first six months, right? When we were like, we have the best front line, Kulu was all world, but his credit has dropped to zero. It and has, it bashed, has, and I got bashed for it for months for saying that. Uh, Scott would tell you, I got bashed on him and Johnson. And right now, you know, I, I want the best for our players, but Kulu going forward. Should never play in the on the wings again. Maybe at the ten, but never on the wings again because oh, I was saying it for ages, I mate, and everyone told me I was crazy. I he's agree better, with that. He, I agree he, he's better I as I've been saying Ronaldo that. could Ronaldo could not big the man up enough when them two actually played up front together for you the in life. the Champions League, yeah. He's your perfect man to play with. He's back. To, use him as a target man there if you have to. And because when he's so him. far on the right and we push him up so far, there's nothing he can actually do half the time except step think, onto his left foot. I think we can see why why the rumours are, the transfer rumours are that, like, I can even see why, although he's not my type of player, that, like, Ange would like a Conor Gallagher. Right. Even better for me Did and Morgan. Did you see him today? Right. Even better see... Morgan. Adrian, I'm going to lose no, my mind. Did you no, see Colin let Gallagher? Me finish, let me finish. Even, oh. even a Morgan Gibbs White. I don't rate Colin Gallagher. I know Gibbs White, okay. Not Gallagher. Right? But, but Morgan's Gibbs White type of player. You can see why Ange 
when he's got his midfield system playing this way on the front foot that it isn't working, there is no... Like, you can bring a Hoyerberg on who comes on well and does well as a sub. You could bring a skip on. Or, but we haven't got anything to change your game. And it's not about plan B, because plan B to me is just BS. Managers no, don't have not. plan B. They've got... Yes, they've they got, do. The best managers no, do. Dan, Dan, no, 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 they don't. No, they so Pep, did a, Pep what? didn't totally change his style of play and totally change his formation when he came and played against Spurs. No. Yes, he did. There's plan no, B. What? No, no, hear what I've got to say, right? What I'm saying is managers go out, they get like three days between a game if you were the top club, right, to do something, to set up, know the opposition, stick your plan down. As Ain said, I'll pick the best team I can to play against the opposition, right? That's what he'll do, right? There isn't a plan B once that game's underway. What there is... You like to have variation on the bench. You can bring players on to change things. Redknapp, Eric Redknapp used to say this. He said, I can't do this. What I can do is look at my bench and think like, I've got a different style of winger or a different style of attacker and like bring them on, hoping they can change things. And that's what it is. This talk about plan B to me, I've never been a believer in plan B, you know. Just don't well, 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 call it opinion. Kulu, Kulu, if... Kulu can't be... Um... Well, first of all, we don't have to worry um, about Ange being savage and pulling the hook on Kulu today because Kulu eventually is winning in life. So he wouldn't take that to heart. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's winning in life. <laughs> he wouldn't take that to heart. <laughs> and he got pulled uh, um, at, at, at halftime. But, uh, but yeah, I, 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 like I, said, I was pretty shocked when Ange had the balls today oh. to pull him because that's how bad Good. he was. And so... It's what I was screaming for for Ange to do last week, last week against Fulham where that was one of the worst bits of managing I've seen in a long time that he just stood there and done jack until we were 3-0 down. Today, he actually got it right. He saw how bad Kulu was, took him straight off at mm -hmm. half-time like he should have took Johnson off against Fulham straight away at half-time. And then he made other subs, which actually worked. And this is what I'm saying. He needs to adapt and have a plan B or tweak with what he's got. And yeah, no, I, um, I totally disagree with you. There is a plan B in a game. If your plan A is not working, <clears throat> you might have to do more than just tweak it as such. You might have to play a total different style to get round that other team. So... If you How do you do that, Dan? How do you do that if it's in the second half? Adrian, if it's in the second half and you're Adrian, on the Adrian, touch, I'll tell you. Mate. I'll How tell you. you I'll tell you. I'll tell you, right? I, the, the one thing I'll give Pochettino a lot of credit to is all the times when Harry Kane got injured, he found a workaround. When he went to Son and Lucas Moura as a front two and changed his, sis and changed his formation, we actually got to a Champions League final like that. So he mm. found a way. And I, and I think managers do need to be able to adapt if if it's not working. Like the one thing I, I never see us yeah. do is so I'm not there, talking about injuries. I'm talking about no, no, but that, no, but no, but he adapted game because game. it wasn't working. Yeah, but, from Adrian, game to game. but Adrian, Adrian, okay, okay, I'll give an example. There's times this season where I watch us and I say to myself, just drop 15 yards back, just drop mm -hmm. a little bit back, so we're not exposed mm -hmm. to them ripping us a new one. You don't have to drop the whole team back. Just drop the midfield. Just drop the defence back a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to give you more space in front, but I'd rather engage looking at you than having to chase back where the only one that can do it is Van der Ven. So mm -hmm. things like that we could do, right? And with yeah. the front three, sometimes, mm -hmm. do you know what? How's about, instead of the inverted fullbacks, do what Liverpool did, where the, the, the guy in the middle, he drops back, and the two wide players push in, and then Firmino, who was in the middle, dropped back. And feed them in instead. So there's little things you can do. That doesn't I'll mean you that. stop playing. That doesn't mean you stop playing. Well, this is the plan B, though, isn't it? That you're saying doesn't exist. No, so, no, no, no. No, I've said the plan B is up. just. I don't I mean, think plan B has changed everything. But there's, no, no, no. there's certain I've adjustments said, you can make. Ange never makes it. He right, never I've, makes those adjustments. It's I've always, said, keep going. I've said on keep different going, podcasts. Keep going. <laughs> right. Just, I've said on different podcasts doing what you just mentioned there. I said we could play our four best midfielders. We could play Saar, Basuma, Madison, you know, Bentacore. I said, 
if you played like you just almost suggested then, if Madison played in a Bobby Firmino role as a false number nine, false ten, whatever you want to call them nowadays, right? You could play two wide wingers, one of them being Son, and then you'd have three midfielders behind them, which would actually give us a bit more protection. Would give us a right because then you'd have Bent, of course, Sam Basuma behind Madison, who's playing in a false nine. I actually think that could work with Son on one wing. Yeah, but Adrian, another... you're describing another way of doing it, which is what Dan's saying. Dan, listen, I think, which I is think a plan B. Agree. I, I think, look, I think you no, two it's different just, words. It's a clash of words. Yeah, it's different think, words. Yeah. He's calling it plan B. You're saying tweak it. It's the same shit. Just change yes. it up a bit. Just I think it. it's just a clash of words well, that, we're having that, here. Well, that would work still. If they've done it on the training ground to say, like, look, when I press a button, switch, we're changing that. Or, One or, game a or week. One touch, game like, a week. Right, lads, plan he's got B. more time. He's got more time with that bloody team than any other team in the top six or anything has had. He sh they should know their crap by now. He should have them, like, they know what they got to do. And then when it's not working in a game and you blatantly can see that you're getting the ball chucked over you every time. And you haven't got your main man there to cover coming back on it. What do you do? Right. Defenders, wing backs, come back that bit more. Midfielder, come back a little bit more, li little bit more as well. Right. Rest you, keep it ticking how it is. There's your plan B. Good You've players, got to adapt. Good players, and if he good players should and have the he, intelligent awareness to see things are going wrong and perhaps right. drop back and but, do exactly what you're saying. I mean, right. like, are we saying that? Uh, what is the manager's job? The manager needs that to is the manager's that. job. The manager that is the manager's that. job. Has the manager be. is the one. Right. Who's the one who says who's playing the first 11? The manager. Who's the mm -hmm. one who's, who they have to follow how they get told to play? The manager. Sometimes when a player has a crap game, people say, but it weren't his fault. The, man the manager told him to play like that. It's the manager who makes the decisions. Yes, a very good player will change his little bit on the pitch and whatever and try a little something. But at the end of the day, they all stick to what the manager says to do because that is the manager's job. You do what I say. He needs to adapt more in the premiership. Today, he did. So I'm giving him credit. Whereas in his last game, he didn't. I think, guys, if it wasn't Luton Town today, it could have been a different outcome. And I think the mm -hmm. game's coming up now. West Ham away, the Newcastle's away, the Arsenal's, the Cities. We're going to find out, right? We're, we're, mm. Now we're really going to begin to find out what's what. Yeah. And, and even, even after West Ham, we've got Nottingham Forest at home. We're going to beat Nottingham Forest at home. Even if it's like it was today, we will mm. beat them. Yeah. After that, though, that, that, that crunch know. period, we're Don't going to see. Know. Alex, box office. How you doing, bro? You good, man? Yeah, still. Um, I, just, I just need to get straight into it. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I haven't learned yeah, anything yeah. today. I haven't learned anything today um, that I didn't know before. To be honest with you, um, I mean, I, I, I mean, the only the only thing at the moment, and you'd be surprised for me to say, I'm starting to warm to one player, and I hope he don't let me down next season. And that guy, actually, ironically, I called a Juventus reject, and that guy is Ben Okor. Mm. He's been a core. Um, the reason why I say it, um, I'm seeing some grit, some balls, and I saw it against. I, I, I kind of noticed it in Fulham. I kind of noticed it at Fulham. I think I've got a little bit more time to find out more about this guy now than more than ever. I know people will say, "Oh, he's he's not the same since his injury," but um, there's something about him that shows me that he's got something about him that um, he don't like losing. And it's got something different to some of the players that we've got at the moment. Because that midfield is just not working at the moment for me. Um, sure. I wasn't at the dream. I wasn't at the game. Because I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about other games as far as I'm concerned. Because um, money's tight, like they say. Um, and the front three, I'm sorry, I'm not convinced. I'm not <clears> convinced <throat> at all with them. I'm sorry. Viverna's just nope. not good enough. Um, nope. And um, Johnson can have his, his, his uh, moment of fame, as far as I'm concerned. Good on, good on him. He made an impact. Can't lie, he made an impact and stuff, but it's Luton, um, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. what, 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 what can true. you say on that, really? It's true. Um, I'm sorry, I, I think, and by the way, I, I don't think he should change and post the No, stick to his guns, mm. stick to his guns because but everyone called Conte for that, and everyone yeah, said Conte yeah, needed but, to get his but, at, 
but Dan, 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 they should he should have stuck to his guns as well. Conte should stick to his guns as well. But he said, it, but the thing is, he did, the but thing everyone is, grilled him for it. Well, well, it, the, the fact is, I mean, that, that we look like mugs anyway, and I said that before after, after when we, we when he was in charge anyway. So the thing is, he told us, he told us right from June, he's going to stick to his football. Yes, he needs to stick to his football. The only thing that needs to happen right now, he needs better players. He needs better players. I'm, I'm done with this trying to be nice about it anymore. You know what I mean? I'm not learning anything more than what I learned before. And I'm fed up hearing that, oh, when Van der Ven's back, I'm sorry, no. No. I'm not hearing that. Van der Ven, <laughs> Van der Ven, when, 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 he, uh, when he gets another injury, when his hamstring pops, what are you going to do then? Which it will again. It will because happen of the way he again. Plays with pace, it will happen you know what I mean? again, and, 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 and again, and, and, and again. And people will find out what, how to play Van der Ven again. They'll find out how to play how to play Van der Ven next season. Trust me, trust me. So this is why I say that we need to improve next season. And you know so this I mean? is why you also need a plan. This is why you also need a yeah, plan but, but B, that, that, so that when it comes, hang on a second. So when it comes to next season, and you've been pretty sussed out the way you play, you need to have a sort of plan B to tweak it about a bit. Of, a little bit like Klopp does every other season, like Pep does every season, just that little couple of changes so that it, whereas if Ange just sticks to this way, the highway, people are going to suss it out like they already have this season. And then next season, we play exactly the same way again. We're going to get sussed out even more. So he needs to adapt every season yeah, but, like a true good manager does. But Dan, if but Dan, we want to go places with him. But Dan, he told us that it's going to take a t- it's going to take time. This of is the thing. It's going to take so, time, so, so the, the, point, the, point, the point I'm making is, but the point I'm making is, right? And I'm actually backing the manager that I don't even like, right? <laughs> so I'm, I'm backing him for I don't even um, because I, I see what he's saying because he he told us if he if he did tell us, fair enough. But he told us in June. He told the board in June we're going to stick to what we want to do. Yeah. If he didn't want my football, don't hire me or sat me. So he told us. So he's not lying to us. So I can't, I can't sit there and say, oh Neither well, you know what? I was, I should, I should, I shouldn't have a go. I, um, I should have a go at him. But even though he told us, no, no I can't, I can't I have a go at him. I, I can't you have a go at him. Point, yeah, but Conte did exactly the same thing. But Ange don't get the same crap that no, Conte no, no, did but because I, he uh, won't change his style. But, Hang but, on, but, for one reason and one reason only, because Ange plays sexier football. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. But and I, the I football agree, isn't even sexier. It's but, horrible to watch. But I, I, agree, I, agree, I agree with you. I agree with you. I, I, I In other words, with, he uh, kicks the ball forward. Dan, I agree I'm with saying. you. Everything you're saying, you agree with you, right? But we look like monks saying that to Conte as well. Exactly. I, I, that's why I didn't like his football. You know what I mean? Because I said, well, if you wanted Conte, you know what you're getting with Conte. So I, I, I can't, you know, I can't have a go at him because he, that's what he does, Conte. But I didn't like him. So this is the thing, and I, and I don't like. I'm I'm told you what I've, you know my feelings on Ange Postecoglou, but yeah. the point is he needs to carry on what he's doing because at the end of the day he's going to have to find a way to try and do this the next couple of seasons, and that's it. And this is where why I said I need to give it time at the moment. But at the moment, he said it himself. They need to express themselves. These players, they're not doing it. They're not doing it. And I'm no, sorry, I agree. Luton. The I'm shocking. sorry, the Luton. This Luton team, we should be beating them, thrashing them three nil, four nil. Alex, oh, it was Luton it C team out there. Wasn't and that's it? the it point. Was... That's the point. I agree. I'm agreeing on that one, mate. It was their C team out there. And it, it, the thing, the thing that winds me up, the thing that winds me up, yeah, right? Because people call it. Oh, by, by the way, I'm being rude now these days. Now I'm, I'm supposed to be rude now these days. Um, according to certain people, or YouTubers these days who are rude themselves. But anyway, moving on. Dan knows who I'm talking about. But the point I'm making is right. Is that um, is that um, you know, when people on, on other YouTube channels, yeah, big YouTube channels, say, "Oh, we're cooking. We should be better than Arsenal." Please, man, stop lying to yourselves. You know what I mean? Stop trying to get hits and clicks. Honestly, if you go in there and watch it for yourself, don't please don't tell me that. You know what I mean? You know the people that tell me that you, you knew only f- and five minutes. You know what I mean? Come on, chill yourselves, man. Chill yourselves. You know because I'm not let getting me, no um, trophies this season. Back to you, listen, let, I'm done. Let, I want, let me go back to the game and then we can have a discussion about these subjects because we've, we've got off on a tangent. There was a key moment in the game at one-one. This goal line decision, right? Mm-hmm. Look. Yeah. How close this yeah. was, people. 
I thought it was a goal. And right, it looked like a goal. It wasn't a goal. When you when you consider this, you consider Hudman uh, Hudman's son hitting the posts, uh, Werner's one on one miss. All these moments, suddenly it's it's four one to Tottenham, and that's before we scored the second goal. Right, Son was unlucky so, with his chance. He was unlucky with his chance. He, it, he it was, was unlucky that one. He was unlucky. He was I, lucky. I, I, uh, does this does this not come back to this this stat where we had seventeen shots, four on target, three clear cut chances, dominating possession? How many times have we seen this? Right, Stats we're just not clinical. Our, our forward line simply is not good enough. And that that again, and and by the way, if people go back and watch that goal line clearance when the ball came across the goal Brennan Johnson fucked it he hit it at the goalie it's hit the goalie then gone down if he put it to the like towards the corner or low it's a goal mm. and Brennan Johnson he's done that a few times this season in fact when we lost 3-0 to Fulham there's one that came across the goal he's miskicked it do you remember that one in front of goal which was like two yards out so if that's Kane if that's Son that's not a goal line clearance. That's a goal, and mm -hmm. I think this is the dif this is the difference with us at Spurs. These moments, we just don't have the quality up front to put it away. Sadly, and I think that's what it comes down to. And eventually, look, we got the winner, and we've got to say big up to Kinman Son, man. He's officially the fifth highest goal scorer in the club's history. 160 goals for Tottenham Hotspur behind legends like Chivers, Bobby Smith, mm -hmm. Greaves, Harry Kane. Like it's no joke, right? Hats off to the guy, legend of the club. He's, and, he's been um, a great player. He's, he's, he's a great he's, player, he's, but he needs to win trophies now. Now, I'm sorry. I think this. I mean, he's gonna. He's gonna. You know, it's great that he's done this. He's scored all these goals, but unfortunately, he's gonna be looked at as someone that just hasn't won any trophies, and that's it for me. And that's, that's well, yeah. That's you know, point. listen, Alex. We, that's that's with every player. You spot. I just want to show the goal. What, what do you what do you think of this goal? Listen, it did take a bit of a deflection, but what do you, <laughs> what do you make of the goal, guys? What do you make? Johnson does well. Johnson does well, to be fair, for that goal. Yeah. Was, it, was, it, was it Johnson that went down the wing? Yeah, no, no, no. No, no, no. no, 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 no. no. Crosses it's it in. The pass he set up Sonny. Which yeah, was yeah. Nice. yeah he, he holds up the ball in the box and oh. then he lays it off to Son and Son scores a goal. But I, I, to be honest, I think I think Luton lost. I think Luton got just tired. I, just, I think they just looked tired. You know what I mean? And that's it for me. So, you know, I, 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 I mean... If that, I expected if that, if Alex, Alex, if that ball fell to another player, are we scoring that or not? No. If it wasn't no. slumped? No. no. Is, is that... Is I, that... I've, said, I've, said, I've said it how right. many times do you still? Look still. at it this way. If that wouldn't have took a deflection, would that have been a goal? Probably not, but... No, not. We, we, had a, we actually had our, we had our first bit of luck in the game, basically. But for, but I, I've said to you already that the, these strikers, other than, uh, other than Son... Uh, haven't got any swag. They haven't got any arrogance at all. You know what I mean? They need confidence. You know what I mean? And I just, uh, for me, it's, like I said, it's. <laughs> but, uh, luckily, we've had, um, we've had, um, you know, we've got Son at the moment, and that's it. He's scoring goals at the moment. But you know, I'm, I'm just not impressed. I just, and I do, I'm just not impressed at the moment, to be honest with you. But, but the thing is, I know what I feel at the moment. It's just, I'm just. I just don't. I just don't know what what people are watching, though. That's the thing. I just think that I, mean, I, I think we just overhype our team. I, I'm not bothered anymore. Still, to be honest, with you mate. I just. I'm not. Bothered are we? Anymore. Are we? Are, are we asking too much, guys? Murray, let me ask you. Uh, Murray, are we asking too much in a first season under a new manager under a rebuild? Because in all fairness, in all fairness, say... right? In Poch's first season, we didn't get top four. In Conte's first season, we did get top four. In Mourinho's first season, we didn't get top four. So if we do get top four, he's basically had the best start to a season that any other manager at Spurs has had. So are we being a little bit OTT and getting carried away with performances not being good? I'm going a, I'm to a say what I've been saying for months. I've said this. You guys can clip it. I've said this. My expectations for this team this year was eighth. I said it was eighth. Anything better than eighth is like, 
cherry on cherry on the cake, whipped cream on the cake, right? And we're doing better than what I predicted. Yeah, but the, you predicted problem, that before you saw how good some of those players were. Yeah. And then yeah. when you saw the how good is, Van de Ven was and how good Vic Vicario is and how good Adoji is, yeah. how much better Poro is, 100%. then all of a sudden it changes the, it yeah, changes the, the, the top six because Conte had a team that was 10 times worse in every angle except Harry Kane. Agreed. And exactly. got us into top four. Exactly there. And I think the problem is, I think the reason why there is, because for me, I've been banging that drum. It's the first year. The problem that we get into debates is that people took the first 10 games and said, we were winning the league. We're better than <laughs> Liverpool and Arsenal. We're better than, okay. than, than sliced bread. We're better than this. We're better than that. This is our set 11. In our first year, people say, we have our first set 11. All we need is three or four people from the bench, and we are great. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We don't have our, our, our set 11. It's our 11 for this season. We need to improve better. And I've been saying, we need to improve on Kulu. We need people to challenge Basuma. I said that at that time. Now I'm saying I want someone to replace Basuma. Like, there were many things, but our fan base overhyped things, right? Because they'll be the first ones to be like, oh, it's his first year. It's his first year. But they were the same clowns who were saying, oh, we're going to win the league in the first year. Then if, you, if you're saying we're going to win the league, then you know what? Then throw out the first year argument then. What is it? You can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't have your cake and eat it too. It's the, if it's the first year, then stop overhyping this team. Stop overhyping this team. Stay humble and accept if we finish fourth or fifth and we go to Champions League, great season, good thing to build on. But when you have mm -hmm. people that, that 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 go off of the tangent, that uh, supersedes expectations like our, our, our fan base did, that's when you have the arguments and the criticism. Because I've been saying since day one, this is his first year. This is his first year. And I'm just looking at how we play, right? People say we play beautiful football. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I mean, beautiful football was Harry Bender. Is this Harry Bender football? No, right. So, Mari, so, Mari, so, Mari, so, Mari, let me, I want to bring Scott in, Scott, Scott M in here, because Scott M, I know, is going to have a different view on this. Is it a case then that we shouldn't expect much, but the problem is the, the people, like there's people in the comments, the same people in the comments who are saying, yes, you expect too much. Yes, you're demanding too much. Those same people, the same ones that are saying, Look how brilliant the football is. Brennan Johnson's going to come good. We're going to do this and that. They're the <clears> ones that are hyping it, not us, right? We're not the ones hyping it. It's them. So, Scott M. But we're the ones who get called down. toxic. But still, but, still, also, yeah, exactly. don't, uh, don't forget the I'll rivals. Just... Don't forget the rivals. Don't forget the rivals. They're, they're hyping us up as well, you know? They're hyping the, us yeah, up no, as well. The, the rivals, not, well, well, depends which rivals. They, was, they, they was taking the piss, mate. They was taking the piss. Click, 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 it is the case where I hear about how we have the best center back in the league in Mickey Vandeveen. We have world-class center back in Romero. We have the best left back in Adoji, the best keeper in Vicario. We have an amazing right back in Poro, right? So we have all, and then we have Sonny who's Sonny. How can we have all of these players who are so great, should be in the team of the season, and then we get fourth and that's better than we can expect? Like, I understand, and, and I know, Mari, right. you saying that we that you expected us to get eight, and that's where I expected. But I also say that doesn't change the fact where we expected, that today we played awful. So if I, if you and I say that we played awful, I don't, to me, that's not being too harsh. That doesn't matter where we thought we were going to finish today. If we see things that are individually terrible or as a team that are terrible, I don't care where we expected to be at the start of the season. That's not good enough. And that's where that's where I think I differ from a lot of people. Yes, we might have had low expectations coming in the season, but I never have the expectations that we're missing sitters like we see from Brennan Johnson and Timo Werner and other people like that. That's never, no matter where we finish. So I think that you're right, Sel. We have heard a lot about from many people who say, hey, you're being too harsh. You're being too harsh. We're lucky. Nobody expected us to be this way, this, this good this year. But also every single one of our players is great and amazing. And so I don't know. I don't know how that, that kind of matches up. And I've, I had that conversation today with, with Dietrichs and we're saying, 
we're letting in chances and goals all over the place. But mm -hmm. all of our defenders are great players. How, how does that match up? Yeah. And then Conte had Sanchez, <laughs> Dyer, and if it weren't a busted up Romero, who else did he have there? And then Davis on the left. Hi, Bjorn Skip in the bust, A busted Emerson Poro, Royale. Who was, yeah, a busted Poro or Royale on the right. And he conceded less goals than we have now. This is my so, whole point of what I'm saying. If we have got this solid defence, which we have got a very good defence, and we've also got a keeper who is, what, five times what our keeper was over the past four years, and we are conceding more goals, basically uh, conceding at least a goal every game. One clean sheet, I think it is, or is it two in about 22 games now? There's something not ticking right here. Is it the defence? Or is it the style of play? So is Dan, it because do you think, Ange Dan, had, one last thing still, one last thing. I yeah. say this on nearly every show and I'll say it again. Ange, when he came to Spurs, it was broken. Fan base, broken, still is basically broken. But he had the easiest job a manager has ever had in football, ever. And that was winning this Spurs fan base. Easy as. All right, boys, kick the ball forward. Fans be happy for a long time. Lo and behold, we play attacking football and we turn a blind eye to when it goes crap. I saw that. He's playing attacking football. Yep. Whereas Conte, he did what he had with one of the worst defences the Premiership has probably seen. And people didn't like it because it just looked hurtful because it wasn't attacking football. And just plays attacking football. A lot of fans now turn a blind eye and they're happy with it. You still need to pull on the parts that ain't working. We've got a much better defence and we've already conceded more goals by now than Conte did last season or, well, the amount of time he was with us with a defence not even half as good and a goalkeeper not even half as good <clears throat> as what but we Dan, have now. But Dan, Conte, Conte counteracted that, your argument, by playing a low block, whereas like Ange doesn't play a low block. So he would have more people back to defend a defence anyway, to mm -hmm. defend the goal, right? So you have to take that into consideration. I get your argument. I get your argument, right? But look, come on. Conte played a low block. Marino was mm -hmm. the same. They were defensive managers. And we still conceded goals under them, which showed that we were we did just didn't have the quality of player. We, the squad's improved, but it's got a long way to go. We need at least nine players, in my opinion. The only so how many players is, did Conte need then? He needed a lot of players. Well, he needed, Conte, he needed, Conte he and Marino ten. both got seven players. Probably not probably not the players they wanted, but they both got seven. You know, Marino Look, came the in, he gave it the big one. After stabbing Poch in the back, which is what he did, he said, because I was told that he said to Levy, so I can get a better tune out of these players. Marino just wanted another job in the Premier League. That's what he wanted, basically. Right, it's it's with him, it's yeah, like, but leading it's, fell for it. There was Marino Marino's to to say team, right? ego, egocentric <laughs> managers, it's about them. I don't want an egocentric manager at my club. You are not bigger than my club. Well, I, I don't want you. I didn't want either of them anyway. I knew they won't be the right fit. No, no, I didn't know nothing about, but I knew they weren't the right fit. But can we, we no. stop saying they're not the right fit? They're not the right fit because they wanted to win, like. That's bad no, on Scott. No, Scott. No. Yeah, yes, no, yes, no. yes. They wanted to win. That's why they're a bad fit. You can go back to Vic Buckingham. You can go back to Bill Nicholson. You can go back to No, Arthur. no, 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 no. Go You're going Kirk back 80 Shaw. years there. You can go to Redknapp. You can go to Joel, right? You can go to Pochettino. They were the right fit. How is Redknapp? What did we win? What did we win with Redknapp? Redknapp was frustrated as hell, just like Conte and Jose were, because he asked for players and he got and he got Louis Zaha, Ryan Nelson, or <laughs> Louis Zaha, right? Like that's the same thing. So Red, how's Redknapp a fit? He's not a good fit either because he didn't win and he was frustrated. Andre, 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 you're 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 all right. They're not the right fit. They belong in clubs that want ambition. So yeah, you're 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 correct. All right, Mario. All right, you're being facetious, guys. Now, guys, is it, is it is it is it fair no. to say? No. Guys, let me let me let me step yeah, in, right. Adrian. Is it fair but, to say then, Adrian? Is it fair to say this for a club that demands success, demands silverware, demands to win league titles, demands to win European trophies, FA Cups? Conte is a hundred percent the right fit, but for a club. 
that wants style above anything else, he's not the right fit. Yes, of course. What have Spurs have always had a tradition of? Coming so, from so, the 1900s. So we, right? we want style. We want style. Trophies is a byproduct, maybe. No, 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 no. Yeah. No, first of all. Well, no, you can't to... say no because you no, just no, said no. yes. Before you even talk first. about trophies, still, before you even talk about them, you have yeah. to have a footballing philosophy. What, Conte what had are that. we about? Sit back what... and counter attack. Right. So, so Spurs always had, right, an attractive football style of playing. Right? Yes. That was always well, been. Well, well. They had a tractor for all under Levy. Levy. No, not right. really. It goes back to the 1920s. Right? Yeah, it goes Adrian, back not under Levy. Not under Levy, we right? haven't. And Didn't George old, Graham old, manage old. us? So, if you've got that philosophy in your club, you stick mm. with it. So, when you bring a manager in, like, suppose we bring a manager in after Ange. He's not going to be here forever. Neither will I be. But, I mean, he's not going to be here forever. But so you bring a manager in. You yeah. need to start bringing a manager in, right? That if you've got five or six on your list, that fit the footballing philosophy of your club. We have not done this. But Adrian, my right? question for you: but that, was, but that philosophy was, doesn't win anything. Adrian, Adrian, when was the last time we won the league? Right, the philosophy that we had. And trust me, I love. I mean, attractive football, but when was, when was the last time we won the Premier League? Uh, the, the, the league. What, what, is, what was the last time we won the yeah, league? Look, Murray, here's your prime example. Mourinho. But, Mourinho on his own has won more than Spurs have ever won, basically. Just Mourinho. He has won more than Spurs. Like and he yeah. doesn't play attractive football, but he wins. So what do we want at Spurs? Do we want this all kick it forward football, try and play attacking football? Ah, don't worry, we look to white today play it, or would we rather just get sit back, get dirty, and win a bloody league See, cup my, or FA Cup for once? My my, think, my my count argument, Dan, I respect your opinion on Maris is if you're a world class manager and you're Mourinho mm -hmm. and you're Conte, who've mostly been back with checkbooks, this is why I think Ferguson's better than those two. Right, and that's what's the case. If every if manager's back with the wins is back with the checkbook. It's a, it's a Milan's not checkbook no. club. Murray, then tell me this, you guys. When they ask this question, if you're a world class manager, not a checkbook club, mate. Not a checkbook club. And you're a world class manager. And, and you're a world class manager. Let me hear the question. You're a world class manager. Why can't you produce an attractive? Attacking football team. If you're that world class, okay, I'll answer that for you. Let me answer this it's one. Yeah? Yeah. Let me answer this one. Right, Conte, Chelsea. He played the way Chelsea were playing against Arsenal. Got battered three nil. No, 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 no. I ain't having that crap. I'm changing it my way. Next thing you know, he goes and wins the FA Cup and league with some brilliant football because the counter attack was really good to watch. Because counter attack is very good football if it goes right. Because he had the muscle to sit back take it in, he had the pace in the wing backs to get it up there and then the pace to put it in the back of the net. With that team Conte had at Spurs, yeah, it, how he got us into fourth place shows he's one of the greatest managers there's ever been on this bloody planet. Because yeah. God would have had problems getting Spurs into fourth place in that one, yeah? Counter-attacking football can look just as good as out-and-out -out attacking football, if you've got the right team to do it. And then, let me add to, the, add to this, you rate this manager, and I know Adrian, you have to rate this manager, Carlo Ancelotti, right? Very pragmatic, right? Real Madrid won by counterattacking with talent, right? They're like, okay, Barcelona and some of these teams, they like possessions whatsoever. We're going to counterattack. And they played it beautifully to win the Champions League. Carlo Ancelotti is one of the most pragmatic managers that are, are out there. He's Italian. He's and, Italian. And, and, <laughs> and they, he they is. have he won, right? So so that's not true that uh, pragmatic managers can't always win. He's won, what, four or five Champions League? And he's a legend. You, Call right. him Ancelotti. Okay. I'll put him up there with... with, 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 with um, and you're right. And you're right. All right. And, I, and, I've probably been spoke, and I've been spoke because I'm old enough to watch the double side play and the team in the 80s with our dealers, Villa and Odell. So perhaps perhaps I'm, um, I'm, I'm a spot. I've been spot with the football I've seen in the past. I'm sorry you guys haven't seen, right? I've been spot with that. But that's what I've been brought up on, you know, and I've seen the success in the 70s. I've seen Spurs win 14 of their 17 main trophies, right? I've experienced that. So, like, 
I've, I've been spoiled, right? So I've probably got a romantic notion about football then, then put okay. it down to that, right? But Go I want to see good football. And not only that, right? I, I renewed my season ticket. Some won the problems when it comes to protests, right? £1,291, right? £70 a game. If I want to go and watch a show in the West End, right, I can read the reviews. I know I'm going to see a good show, right? I don't know what I'm going to get when I go to football, but I do it because I love a club and all that. But I go, right? And I'll keep going as long as I can fault to go, right? But I want to see good football. I'd love us to win trophies, but to me... I want to see good football, attractive football. Don't we all? I don't want don't low get the best sides. Listen, listen, if you're happy with that, that's fine. I've got but no we're not seeing good football right now, now, Adrian. I don't want to this see good football. I don't want to pay £70 to watch shit. Adrian, hold on. Stop, stop, stop. One second, guys. One second, second one, one second, one second. One second. Adrian, Adrian, one second, one second. When you came on the show tonight and I went around and I said, how you doing, everyone? Hello. The first thing... When you started talking, was that performance was rubbish tonight? Yeah, you've paid. You're, you're not watching good football now. No, we're not watching no. good football now at Spurs. So this no. is so this is this is so this is at the this is at the core of it. Ange doesn't play this sexy, amazing football. Like when, when I really deep it, when I really deep this season, Man United away, Villa away, Burnley away, Newcastle at home, and Arsenal away. They're the only games where I can honestly say I thought Spurs played really, really well today. Mm -hmm. All the other games, patches, little moments. West I don't think Spurs are home. We lost those games. We played quite well. For the first 30 minutes. Mm. And then we didn't know what to do. We looked clueless. I don't think Spurs are playing this amazing football everyone's making out to be. And do you know but, what? But still, like, this, this, still. This, this, so why, yeah. why has the fan base sort of changed their attitude? I'll tell you why. Because like... All right, it is more risk football. It might not Ch be change your attitude towards football. what, Adrian. Change hold on, hold on. What? Hold on. No, you said change, still... change, change from what to yes. what? Well, to me, to me, this is my opinion, right? This football we're seeing, although I'm not happy with it totally, right? Yeah, is yeah. better than what I watched under Conte. Nune or this Marino. is what Mari said. It's but this no, is what said. It's only it's because you were so anti Conte. No so, way. Adrian, 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 you're allowed your opinion. I, I think it's what Mari said. And I think the whole fan base has been duped. L last season was so toxic, so mm -hmm. rancid. Everyone wanted to kill each other. We had people on the high street kicking off. People wanted to kick <laughs> off with the protesters. That's you foolish. had talk sport, pundits cussing Levy. You had That's the media foolish. cussing the fans. We, last season was so horrendous. Anyone that came in and just played a bit of attacking football, it was like, okay, we're happy now. Ooh, That's what I ooh. said. He had the Stelios, Stelios, ever. Stelios. Dan said it. Sorry, Dan said it, not Mari. Sorry, Dan, you're right. You I said get, it. But, I but get Stelios, Stelios, Stelios. No, I respect it. I respect it. But Stelios, can I just say something, though? We're still no. toxic now. <laughs> we're still toxic now. So no, I don't, we're not toxic now. We're not. They're, they're no, 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 we are not happy now, bro. Trust me. Yeah, you don't need to say. You don't need to. There's a lot of channels happy out there, Alex. There's a lot of channels. Stilios, Stilios. Can I just say this right now? Yeah. Can I just say this right now? Dan knows this as well. Yeah. Dan knows this as well. Yeah. We are not happy right now. Yeah. Right. Because if we were happy right now. Lots of YouTubers will be willing to do lots of stuff with together, bro. Let's let's not get this let's not get to this point because I'm getting tired of hearing this. Yeah. Oh, we need to be together. We are not together, bro. We are not together. Yeah. Alex, the only time the only time this fan base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 but, yeah, yeah but let's be honest here. Let's be honest here. Anything could be better. What Dan said about um Anne's post well, agree with you. On that. Uh, uh, what Dan said earlier, right? Was yeah. absolutely spot on. He said this a couple of times. As all he needed to do was just play the ball forward, and that's it. And have a personality. Yeah, we agree. Like Aaron, we agree on that. And that's we it. We agree on that. Yeah. yeah, yeah and no, that's we, all yeah. that everybody was jumping up and down about. And that's it. But this fan base is not together. Yeah, because we're still arguing about Levy. Right. Still, Levy comes up because we're doing FFP Kings. Right. Um, we're still arguing about. Oh, we need to backhand or we don't backhand. Right. The football's not great. Right. And we're still arguing with each other because we we still don't because everyone doesn't know what they want and that's it. 
Yeah. Mm. And we still don't know what the future holds still. Yeah. Even though people are still positive and that's it. So for me, at the moment, I'm sorry, when people say that we've got a great community, that's a lie. That's an absolute, no. true, and utter lie. No, and I'm sorry, no, this is me. No, this is me. This is me. This is me. This is This is me. This is me. This is me. This is me. Adrian, I'm speaking now. I'm speaking now. My point is, yeah, right, is that I think that at the moment, this is what I feel now, right? I'm not having a go at people, but when I hear this rubbish saying we've got a great community, that is absolute garbage. Yeah, look at yourselves and tell me where you'll be nice to each other right now. I'm telling me, tell, tell me the truth, and that's it. But she says, I'm done. We're not talking about the community. Well, what we're talking about, do you think, as individuals here, you'll all have different opinions? Fair enough. I'll, I'll respect them, right? Do you think the Spurs fan base in the majority are happier, the even, even, are even though, look, even though we know we've got a long way to go to fix the squad and things like that. Do you think the Spurs fan base, as we stand now, are happier in what they're seeing with the folks in the team than they did under Conte, Mourinho and Nunes? And I believe they are. I no, believe they're, they're clueless. Now, no, they're know, not it's clueless. Fair enough, I, don't, I don't think it's that, Adrian. I don't think I don't think it's that. I don't I don't think I think that's not quite right. It's not they're they're happy because they're not seeing the football from last year. I think it's what what built up for four years when we sat to Poch and we didn't do the rebuild. And then we spent four years with Stellini, with Mason, with Conte, with Nuno. Let's not forget Nuno, yeah? Mm. I think all of that time, I think a lot of fans look at it and say, all that money we've spent on these five managers in four years, if we just gave that to Poch, we could have done the rebuild and we could have been happy. Instead, we've completely fucked I it. agree. And I and I think what Ange's what Ange's done, right? I think what Ange's done, the way he speaks, the way he doesn't throw players under the bus, That's the magic. way he says it's on me, it's on me. I yeah. think for a lot of fans, it's a breath of fresh air from the last four years that Levy created, right? Daniel Levy created. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I I, I think what Ange does is he gives you the potch vibes. He gives you the vibe. Yeah, and he's on the pitch. I was on the pitch, but on the pitch, we don't know yet. We don't know yet. It's too soon. We don't know. No, we do. I was disgusted with some. We don't know yet. We don't know. So we do know over Pochettino, right? Because they were quick to throw him under the bus. We lost the Champions League final. We hadn't won an away game for all that. And I'm thinking, hang about, guys. We haven't bought a player in 518 days and you want to throw that manager under the bus who's got a second, third and fourth in the league. I mean, do you he know wants, anything about trophies. football? Do you fans know anything about football? Yeah, we do. It's about winning trophies. He wants zero trophies. So he's a muppet. So get him. Potts did brilliantly at Spurs. No, he, he did, did not brilliantly. Brilliant. Yes, he did. Oh, did Conte. Conte. We went oh, did two Conte. years. We went two years you know, without any signings, bro. No, 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 wait, wait. no manager you know, in top football. Listen, no manager in yes. in, in, in if, of any of the top five leagues. Listen to me, the top five leagues in Europe. Not one club in their entire history. Not one club of any of the top five leagues went five hundred days without signing a player. Poch is the first in history, and this yet isn't... we're throwing him under a bus. Yeah, I don't get it. The only manager that worked miracles at Spurs is Mourinho. He took the shit players of Poch, his shit players, his shit transfers, and he got us to a cup final. Uh, Mourinho was only interested in Mourinho. He's yeah, but he got. Oh, that's cup because final. he didn't Mourinho have to play a single team on the way to that cup, cup final. It doesn't Poch matter. Got to... Poch got to a Champions League final with, with no signings it for two years, luckiest... and we sold Dembele. We sold the five it months before the It was the, the final. luckiest run to the final <laughs> because of no. War. Because Jose's of war. was really the luckiest mean. run to the final. Look how he look at the teams he faced. Look, Marine bro, we got and to the final because of Oak and, and because of the place a single <laughs> difficult team. So, so, sorry, 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 sorry. One second, Peter. Right, you do this every show, right? I don't know why you come on this show. Every show, you say the same thing. What makes you all a bunch of experts? Then don't listen. Go watch another show, right? I'm not an expert, like, Peter. I'm like, not an expert. Like, like, just same saying. thing. Every like, time like, somebody minute, says something about on, Ange, on. you better minute, second. One minute, one minute, right? Right. This is how I know you don't understand football, right? So let me let me educate you as someone that's done his coaching badges and actually met some top coaches, right? I'd like to see Pep coach against Sheffield United to see how good he is. Pep doesn't do 
that level because he's too good for it. Mm. He took over Barcelona's B team that was in the league be below La Liga and won the league with them. No money, no, no big signings, right? And he won La Liga's second division with a B team. And by the way, that B team was mainly under 23s and under 21s, just so you can understand what he did. Because mm. of his achievements, Barcelona said, we can't let this guy go to another club. You're taking over Barcelona. And he won everything. The best managers go to the best clubs because the best clubs know that they're going to spend money. And when you spend big money, you want to know one thing. I'm not going to piss this down the drain. Man United hired Oli, spent 400 million. What did they do? Nothing. That is a big club's worst nightmare to put loads of money on a manager and for it to collapse. When you bring in Klopp, when you bring in Pep and you give them money, it's guaranteed success. That's why they're the best. Okay, so that's why, why the best. That's why the, that's why the best Conte bankers. Mourinho. Mourinho. That's why the best Mourinho. managers. Ancelotti. That's why the best guys. Okay, that's why the Ancelotti. That's why the best bankers work for Goldman Sachs, not fucking Halifax. Okay. That's why the best. That's why the best retail <laughs> managers. It's true. It's true because they want the best because they're going to pay you the highest salary because they want you to get the best results. Okay, stop, works. stop. Stop, so stop. Let people me ask you... calling out Pep are clueless, man. Stop. Let me ask it's you this madness. question. Then. Let me ask you this question. <clears throat> if you okay, if those players are ready to have no, like those teams are ready to have like big managers, why do we have to accept Ange and nobody? Why do the fans accept a nobody? Let me ask you this. Because we are, why we not demand the fan base in sport? Style of football. It's style of football. I think he's got a point. They they saw Jose. And Conte walked through the door, and they're like, "Well, we didn't win with a paycheck manager or or trophy winning managers, so let's go with someone who is don't want to say no name, who's been He's successful, a no but a plays an attacking football. Uh, let them come in because our fan base has already accepted that those coaches are asking for too much ambition. So we need to find a coach that's not going to rock the boat." And maybe win that way, kind of like like kind of like how Poch was with, with Southampton. So that's what they wanted. Okay, so let me but, ask you this one. But, but what ended up happening was Poch, as he continued to win, was like, "Yo, I I want a mission. I want to win." And went five hundred days of not backing him, and so eventually he became like Conte and Jose. Felt disappointed that the club. So Ange. Is going to. I'm, he's going to crack. He's being a good okay, boy. Murray, right now. Murray. He's going to crack when he's going to get to a point where it's just like, damn, I need better players. Today he didn't celebrate. I'm looking at his body language and I'm thinking maybe Ange is starting to think, damn. Murray, Murray, so, no, by that logic, by that logic you just said, we're not a top six club then. If, if, if you get too much ambition. So by that logic, we're not top six. I don't think we no, are top six. I, I, agree. Just, okay, I, I, I don't, don't think we are top six. Club. Club. We call it a big six, but we're not really a big can, six club. Can I? We're a big, we're not big six. Here, we're, we're, not. We're, we're a big six business, but as a mm -hmm. club, I'm probably. Mm -hmm. can, I, can I ask you a question earlier, Stelios? Can I ask you a question earlier? Because I've asked, I've been answered this, asked this question a, a lot of times. Yeah, what was your yeah. expectations this season? It was eighth. Well, you've exceeded uh, your expectations this team right now, and I look at it like this. I said, this league at the moment didn't know about the way that we played. We surprised everybody. Let's just be honest with the players that we have. And they've, they've, they've outperformed themselves, right? I've said this is a bang average league because I think the Spanish league and the Italian league have got more quality players. Hence the fact that you've seen Johnson, mm -hmm. most, uh, um, one of the best assisters from the, um, as a winger at the moment, yeah? Who, who let's be honest here, has not been, has been okay, good. You know what I mean? So that just sums up the quality of the Premier League. It's entertaining wise, it's been great, and that's it. But for me, that question annoys me because the thing is, though, you're thinking, well, he had no expectations this season. So you can't really judge it this season. And even Ange says this again, emphasizing, I don't like the manager. And he says it himself. Yeah. He said, Dutch be on my second season. So when people ask, Josh, you say, not my is it, I, I, I'm, I'm exceeding my expectations this season. We didn't have any expectations this season. 
You see what I'm saying? No, when, he's you... got expe- when he's got expectations next season, that is when you can judge him. Alex, you know what I mean? Alex, wait, 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 Alex, Alex, this is the sort of thing that's annoying me. No, no, come on. We get stupid no, fans. Okay. You oh, have Alex. stupid YouTubers okay. telling me, Tom Fox YouTubers telling me, <laughs> oh, you, we should have, right. why can't you give me credit for this season? Loving it's the annoying. passion, guys. Let me, let me ask you a question then. Let me ask you a question, right? You're flying to America, you're going on holiday, you're going to Florida, you've got a fa- you, 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 you're going to Vegas, wherever, <laughs> who cares, right? You it's get on the plane, California. right? You get on the plane and you're expecting to sit on a seat like this for 10 hours, to be given a meal, Go to the toilet a couple of times and watch a movie, right? That's your expectation. And you get mm. to the other side and you can't wait to get to the other side because you're sick of you're, you're sick and tired of sitting like this, right? You get you get to the airport and they say to you, um, sir, we've overbooked, we're gonna upgrade you to business class. Does your expectation of service now change? Yes, yes it does. Yes. Right? Yes, it does. Now you're yes. thinking I'm gonna get a bed, I'm gonna get uh, uh, served on proper plates, I'm gonna have a big TV screen. Okay, this season. After that start and seeing Man United being as shit as they are, Chelsea being as shit as they are, and Newcastle practically collapsing, my expectations changed. Yeah. I said to myself, they're there for the taking. So mm. I started off the I started off the season being happy with economy. Now I expect at least, at least premium economy. Yeah. So 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 if we fall off of that, I'm gonna get angry because we've missed an opportunity. To take advantage of getting an upgrade, does that make sense? Well, can yeah, I say something I else? You, but... Alex, 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 one more thing. Yeah. You said this season we had no expectation. You had no expectation. I had expectations. Scarlam had expectations. The minimum well, no, I, expect, you can... I expected seventh or eighth. Uh, no, no, that's but, but that's you. I expect a minimum no. challenge for trophies, the small trophies, mm. the FA Cup, the League Cup. That's what I wanted. I Show knew we weren't going to do that, bro. No, 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 no. We can. You've seen what's a uh, fallen one who will go to the semi final. It is possible. Yeah. That was my expectation. And nobody wants that. Nobody uh, sure, okay, that enough, you're not... right. I'm with Dietrich on that one. I yeah, personally I'm think that, that he one. made a terrible mistake yeah. by screwing up that League Cup. If we'd have finished 10th, 15th even, but won that League Cup, that man would have bought himself a lot of time and I'd have been happy. I'm at yeah. that point. I couldn't give a toss about sexy football. I don't really care where we finish in the league as long as we don't get relegated. I couldn't give a monkey's about getting in the bloody Champions League anymore. I just want to see Spurs bloody win something. Coventry, right, Coventry isn't right, wait, wait, Coventry, and, like, Coventry won, isn't the FA Cup FA Cup semi final. Coventry. If we'd won the Carabao Carabao Cup, I just wonder if like and we didn't finish top four, whether like. And would have been sacked because I remember Di Matteo getting sacked after winning the FA Cup in the Champions League with Chelsea. <laughs> so I just wonder. Well, that's, I just that's, that, that's, that's Chelsea. That Chelsea's high is... expectation, high demand, high <laughs> high ambition. Yeah. High that's what, so the only, thing I ask those, the only thing I ask you guys, like, just keep a standard. Don't accept mediocrity seven, eight. We're supposed to aim higher. I we don't buy think the best a... players. We have the best stadium. We should aim minimum trophies. I don't, I don't I think it's a bad thing. If we yeah, yeah. Do. Alex, no, Dietrich, hold on, hold on. I agree with you. Dietrich, I agree with you. That's why I've been protesting for God knows how many years. I agree with you. My problem is I can't have high expectations when I see players like Timo Werner, Brian Hill, Richarlison, Hoybiers, mm. uh, Emerson Royale's backup. I can't mm. have high expectations. Okay, but then... Okay. When I see these players, it's not possible. Okay, but still, yes, I cannot have I cannot have a manager tell me judge me on my second season. Yeah, but I cannot not? have that type of manager. But he, but he's, he, but, but, but a but manager he's, should but, never say judge me on my second season. No, should judge you the first season. Well, well, Conte did nothing in his first season. Poch huh? didn't do anything in his first season. No one. Conte, did. Conte came after him. Nuno got sacked. He didn't have even a summer. Yeah, but Ange came yeah. in. I mean, hold on, hold on. Ange came in after we already started signing players, and 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 five days before the season started. Yeah, but at least he had a. Hold on a minute. Five days before the season started, we sold the best player at the club with no replacement. Ange okay, had but... no say in that. No, no, but at None. least he at least he had one. So give him the... this year as well. Give him that guys, question: Who did you want for manager before Ange came in? Uh, Simeone uh, and Zaghi, the top managers. I wanted Nagelsmann or no Arnie Schlott. I wanted Arnie Schlott. Nagelsmann. Uh, I don't know what I wanted. I don't I know. I'd love, love to get Simeone at Spurs. Me too. 
I would love a Simeone. Simeone's football would absolutely turn this fan base into World War Three. <laughs> no, he plays sexy football. That's a lie. Hey, hey, he plays hey, good hey, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this because people will poo poo on Simeone. Simeone is a uh, uh, Sergio Ramos header and a Gareth Bale header for not winning not one Champions League, but two Champions League, two finals. The only one, not once but twice, to stop Real Madrid and Barcelona from winning the league. Like, Diego okay. Simeone with Atletico has. Put them on the map. But yes, yeah, he has. Don't laugh. I wanted Ten Hag. I wanted Ten Hag. Because I thought, yeah. when Ajax come and played at Spurs and beat us 1-0 at the stadium, they were class. Before, like, the yeah, hat they trick, were class. I thought, this is a football team. This is the way I want to see our team play football. You know what I mean? So, they, had, they, they had an academy. They had a, they had the wave of players that came through the Ajax academy that were all brilliant, though. They mm. had a... Mm. We don't. We we we. I don't know what's going on with our academy. I've given up with it actually. Yeah, yeah. but we don't even play. Well, the I, don't, I don't think. We don't even play youngsters. I don't think. I don't <laughs> think it's a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. We're we're not playing well at the moment. I don't think it's actually a bad thing that we're we're falling off right now because I don't think it is because what? I feel I feel that will put less pressure on next season for me. No, but I think Alex... then, I think then it, it will it will it highlight the fact we need to improve big time next season. Alex. Right? If we get when has that season, ever made a difference, though, Alex? Well, exactly, yeah, I, 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 I exactly. understand. I understand the point. I understand the point, but I'm just trying to look at it another angle, basically. No, I'm the better saying, angle. The better I, angle I, just... I, I just don't think no, top Alex four finished. at the no, moment. Oh, sorry, sorry. I don't. Please. I don't think top four, right, or getting top five or Champions League, right, is going to help us, right? I would rather go Europa League or Europa Conference League. And we just work from that at the moment. We can get mm. good players. We've proven we can get players through this data-led approach, right? Um, and just continue with that anyway. And even if we don't get good players, I don't want players just coming to Tottenham just to want to play your Champions League. No, I don't. I don't want those Alex? sort of players. Thank you very much. I want players. I want players that want to play for Tottenham Hotspur, right? And mm. want to play long term. That's what I want, right? Because that's the right way. That's the right approach, and they, they will fight for the club. And that's it for me. Right? Alex, I think one thing everyone's missing here is that Spurs, bar eighty years ago, have only ever been a cup club, and that is all we ever have been. Nothing more, nothing less. It's bar true. Two wonderful seasons, yeah. Mm. And we are not even a cup club anymore. No, yeah. Do you know? Yeah. No, guys. Do you know exactly. what's killing me? Do you exactly. know what's really killing me is getting me, not getting on my nerves with Ange. He never tweaks it. So how can I trust him next season? I just hope he just tweaks some stuff, change his system. He did he's today. Not, he's not, he's not he going to change his system. He, he pulled Kulu, which I was very happy. He, he pulled Kulu. I was like, after we, consider, after we consider, after we consider, after two minutes, boy. <laughs> We he will not change his it. system. I'm sorry, but I'm 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 got to the point now where uh, I'm sorry, but he's told us already, guys. Right? So suck him. Suck no, him yeah, but, no, yeah, but, but but I'm not no. being funny. But but no, no but I'm not being Let's funny, stick Dietrich. With the manager for Christ's sake, but, but for once in a while, Dietrich. I'm not being funny, right? If the if if the ownership had a problem with this, he told them in June. He told them in June, and he's been consistent. And I'm telling you this after I'm, I'm not even like the guy. And he's been telling everybody. So I'm, I'm, I'm not hearing this. I'm not hearing this. Glad what you said, actually. He actually said it in a recent interview, which tells you, if you think between the lines, what he thinks of the squad. He said, it will take us three transfer windows. Now, I don't know what three trans transfer windows is in the mind of you guys, to, but to me... It's three players a winner the minimum, so it's nine players. So Adrian. if that's nine players, then I'm thinking, hey, he's not happy with this squad, the strength of it. It's it's quantity, not happy, Adrian. Adrian, it's quantity. Adrian, the other thing he also said, the other thing he also said is I think not just stars for the future, but also solid players. I don't expect any superstars. We know Tottenham's strategy is different from this. The mm. strategy of Spurs is to sign bye two, bye. three, four different bye bye. players. Bye Let, bye me bye bye. Let me finish. Let me finish. I'm bye. sorry. Bye. Two, bye. three, four different players rather than one superstar. <laughs> this is the clear project of the club. The clear project of this club is to go for quantity, not quality. And we're back to square one. What? Do, uh, 
you can't send it in June. Oh, come on. I mean, like, okay. <laughs> for, for, all the, for all the bickering we do about the club, the ownership, Mike, blah, blah, Mike, blah. You blah. Happy? We Mike, cannot afford the fact that recruitment has improved. No, no, no. AJ, 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 You've just interrupted him. Let him finish. Adrian, finish what you say, then Murray's going to address Mike. Go on, Adrian, finish what you say. We, we cannot deny, can we, that, okay, right, the last few transfer windows, there's been a vast improvement through Paratici. Through Paratici, mm -hmm. the whole... And luck. Academy, the, well, whatever. And luck. Okay. Oh, well, well, okay, right. Things have improved dramatically. We've changed. The team's changed. All, most of the old guard have gone, Right. And there's been a complete revamp, and it has been for the better. Now, we've not nowhere near getting success because we're at domestic cups and we're not in Europe. So we we all we can do is hope, as all fans do, coming up to a new season, is that like we'll have a good transfer window. I think we need at least four players, and I I wouldn't expect more than four in the summer transfer window, but I'd expect four players in, right to to elevate the squad to a different level so Angie has more choices, right? To, to, you know, to, to pick from. And then, uh, and then we'll see where we are. But, I mean, like, it has improved, let, guys. We have improved. Let me give you I mean, a point. If okay. we are really that bad and we're really that shit, why are we fifth in the Premier League? Right. Let me give you a point here for everyone. Let me give a point for everyone. Well, fifth Question isn't a trophy. For everyone, then, yeah? Question for everyone. Right. We had a manager stand there who is a winner, who says he's a winner, everything else, other people saying plays better football, everything. Totally get it. And we've got to stick by him because we haven't really got much other option. We have a manager that blatantly stood there in front of everybody and said, no player will enter this team without my permission. No player will be played or picked to play for us without my permission. Then my manager turns round and says... Yeah, but Spurs, we're not going to go for any superstars. We're just going to go for quantity, not quality, because that's the way we do it at Spurs. I lose faith. Because we now have... Hang on, I'll say the last word. We now have another puppet. Ange, just another puppet now to me with what he's gone and that's say. That's not proven yet, Dan. That's a bit... I think no, that's... It's, it's, I understand it's, your it's just blatantly it's said it. What I just read is what he just said, what no. uh, Stell sent me, and then I see on other things. He blatantly is... I'll send you the thing, or Stell can send it to you. No, 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 no. I'm, not, I'm not denying it. what you're saying. I'm not denying then what you're saying. Then when he's blatantly no. saying that no one's going to come through this squad without my pick, no. and then he blatantly no. stands there and he says... Right. That we're going to go for quantity, not quality. No, but you. Where's my? Come on, come that's on. That's what he said. If you know anything about Ange at all, you know that when he brings in a squad of players, wherever it's Salt, wherever it's been, right, he doesn't go for like prima donnas, you know. No, I know that. Players like that, right? He, he and he tends to want the younger type of player, the under the twenty five year olds and younger. That's what I get. Then, if I'm wrong, correct me. Right? No, but Adrian, you're wrong. Do you know why? Because like the players you're talking, because the play, no, the players you're talking about, it's the uh, he played in the Japanese league and um, Celtic. So of course he's not going to get any prima donnas. But this is the Premier League. This is Tottenham. You need the best of the best. If you continue with mediocrity, we're going to finish tenth next season. I'm not season. saying about the best of the best. I'm just saying the age group of what he brings. No, age group. He so stated that I am going to go basically to cut it short. He stated, "Stell, please make me right here. I am going to go for quantity, not quality." And that yeah. is how Spurs. Work. Yeah, well, he, 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 he never said that. that is another part of quantity and quality. Never use those words. That would be a fatal thing word. to say. He never used those words. To say but, quantity over quality. No, and Adrian, hold on. He never used those words. What no, he said that's was, not what I said. He said, he said, at this club, we're not going to spend a hundred million pounds on a player. We're not that club. We never will be. And he went on to say that <clears throat> we're not going to go and buy expensive um, superstars. Um, that's that's not that's not the that's not the plan here. He never said that's not my plan. He said that's not the plan here. As in, this is what the club wants. And then he said, we're, we're more likely going to sign three or four players. So what he's, what he's basically saying is, if he's given 200 million, he's got to sign seven or eight players. He can't go and sign three or four players for that money, um, which which is quantity over quality, basically. That's the same pattern we've seen over the last, God mm -hmm. knows how many years. Yeah. Uh, just to address Mike, 
Well, um, I first think of all, first of all, well, Laurie, go on, first of all uh, on this channel, um, most of us, when we hire Ange, even Will, uh, we're all accepted, and we've always said we're back, Ange. Still to this day, we're back, uh, back, Ange. When we invite some of our guests, some may have a different, uh, uh, a different opinion. But my my thing is, it's just that, and and, and it's you re represent the fan base that in the sense of we have to accept everything that Ange does and not criticize. Uh, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm a fan of, of of the club. First of all, I have a right. Number two, if we see that something's wrong, like today, right? Of course, we're going to cr uh, criticize. Yeah, right? of course. Were you were you entertained today, Mike? Today, were you uh, 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 injury real um Luton? The fans right. were booing at half time. They booed them off the pitch. They booed at half time. Mm. But uh, but not we're the haters, right? <laughs> we're, we're the haters, right? Right? Are we? When he says he uh, a bite and we're haters, were you entertained? Today? Ange went out to Fulham, right? We didn't make that up. Ange went out to Fulham in the cups. Did we make that up? Yep. We're out of the FA Cup early. Did we make that up? We're not anywhere close to competing with the top teams. Did we make that up? Like this is what I don't get. Again, we're stating things. This has not been a season that's good enough. We didn't make any of that up. That's what's happened. But this is the problem with our fan base. And especially with the people who can't take any criticism of Ange, is that when we state things that have happened, that if you ask people, they they certainly weren't good enough under Conte, they weren't good enough under Jose, they weren't good enough if Nuno was here. Somehow now that Ange is here, all going out early in the cups has to be expected. We can't expect it's because to do he well in the, the cups. Ball forward. We can't play the ball forward. done. Yes. Listen, on, on previous We're not justifying or hating anything, it's just stating yeah, what's but, hang on, hang on. We've all done critiques of Ange. We've all criticised his substitutions, the timing of the substitutions. We've all done that. We all love the club, but we've all critiqued him. I mean, like, we're not saying, like, he is pure and sanctified or something and, like, and he's the best thing since sliced bread, are we? We've all criticised him. You know, in No, today, but now this year, more than any other manager I can ever remember, remember us having, you... Any criticism of Ange is like, it's horrible. Like, look in here. How many times is there, hey, I don't really like that move by Ange. Well, I guess we better sack him because people cannot stand any criticism. It immediately goes to, you might as well sack him. You know, in the comments, Adrian, not you. You're fine. I don't think you're one of the people who's who has made Ange untouchable. I don't think anybody here has. But in the comments, we see it. If you criticize Ange, it's it's blown way out of proportion. No, like that comment that Mari brought up. Can I, can I be yeah. honest? Can I, I be honest? Stick with the manager. Give him a chance. The problem is nowadays, it's like everything with social media and anything else, fans and sports of all things, is the fact that all fans want instant success. They're so impatient. No, no, no. Most of them would sack a, manage, a new manager in pre season. Like, no, no, you know, that's not fair, Adrian. Because, no, 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 Adrian, no, no, no. See, it's no, no, see, this is where I disagree with you, right? It's different at this club. It's very different. In fact, there's no club in the world like this club. We are one of the biggest clubs in England. We get told week in, week out, big six, top six. We should be in the chat every freaking year. We hear this, right? We are, the only, the world. we are the only big club with the riches that we've got that wins. Buckle. We no. win nothing. True. We don't even come. We True. don't even come close most seasons, and, right? For me, this this isn't about Ange. I, I'm not Ange out. I will criticize some of his tactics. I will criticize why certain players he's allowed to be at this club, like Turbo Wiener. That is that is if he if he picks him and he and he's accepted him to be at Spurs, that is on you, Ange, right? But exactly. I don't blame Ange. I don't blame Ange. I blame that fucking weasel that runs this club, Levy. He yeah. built this culture. He built this money machine. He's a scumbag. He hey. hires and fires Paraticis, Lange, McKenzie, Scott Munns. He hired the people to build the structure, right? So at the end of the day, if Ange gets sacked, I am fully starting up the protests again against Levy. It will always come back to him. I'll be with for you. Now, I'll be for, with now, you. Don't worry about that. for now, I think Ange is doing a very good job in his first season. I do. But, but that doesn't can... mean, like Dan said, or Mari, I can't remember who said it, but that doesn't mean we can't criticise performances yeah. when they're not good. We've yeah, done it today. We've done it today. I've done it today. Yeah, I've but I, I, think, I, think, I think, 
Sorry, I think, I think, I think we just got, got to You've got psychos. You've got psychos in this fan base. Don't say anything about the manager. How dare you say Brennan Johnson was crap? Oh, my God. You Did think... You know? You think the how, da how dare you ever say that Son is not world class? I've always you believed. Can't say anything. I don't think they do it in the coaching world, uh, but I've always believed still, right? We that just about beat a team that's no, got ten thousand fucking right, seat okay. stadium. Right. That, is, is, that is bottom of the league. We just I, we just I've, about beat them I've, with I've, their C team. I've with their C team still, basically, right? This but, probably but, won't but everything's happen gravy. because everything's great. because we live in a political sensitive world i've always believed that of after each game when you've got the individual stats the full stats across the board for each player that they should then go into their training ground on the following week and a manager sits down with them or someone sits down and said look you were good at this but you were crap at that Stop, you stop. need to improve your I, just, game. I, need, I need to go i know I that's go. never going to happen that's never going to gonna happen can I, 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 can I just like, say, can I, Alex, Alex, I need to leave. I'll just leave. So, have a good night, everyone. Good night, night Scott. And, and Dan, I told respect you about... Respect your opinion, man. Yeah, and respect to you, Adrian, it's too. Deep and Kirk's leaving. Dietrich, you were just saying something quick. Yeah, Dan, That's and I told you about Kulu. He's a bum. So, have a good evening. Now. <laughs> 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 Firstly, 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 I was telling people about him being a Ujit and Ujit a long time ago anyway. So, I don't know where everybody's going on that anyway. Because I was telling you first hand on that one. But I, I, firstly, I just need to say this. Everyone can say whatever they want right now. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, we've been, we've been, we've seen this before. You know what I mean? We have seen this before, right? All I say is, is this. Until next season, the season after, we'll see whether this, this lies and that's it. We, we, we can't say any more. We, we've got to stop this rhetoric of like saying political this or political that. That's the problem when we talk about leaving. That is the problem when we talk about Levy. Let's stick to the football at the moment. Everyone can say whatever they want at the end of the day, whether they hate it or not, and that's it. There's nothing that's proven anything at the moment. We've not won no trophies, right? So we ain't won, we ain't got no success. We've done oh good for the first season, yes, but again, no expectations this season. And then we have to see how it goes, and that's it. But I don't care anymore. You can have a go at me how much you want. I am not changing my mind on the manager. I'm still hate the manager because of you fans. Because of you fans. I was skeptical at the beginning. I hate him right now because of you fans. Yeah? So, so because like I said base, before, I because, of the fan fan base, because of the fan base, I hate the manager. Right? And that's Alex. not his fault. It's the fans. Yeah? Because and, and to be honest with you, to be honest with you, right? If they keep on going up, like, keep on going on, on on and that, that's it. I'll just ignore it and I'll say, well, I, I want Ange out. But the point I'm saying is, is that you need to give people time, and that's why I'm saying at the moment, until this, until we mm. see what the board do when he, this guy carries on what he's doing and he stick with him, that will change the culture at Tottenham, I and agree. that's it. And I will not say that I anymore. Agree. I'm not saying that anymore now because I'm bored of saying it now. I agree. And that's it. You know what I, I mean? And I think fans it's just it. need to accept, Tottenham fans need to accept it, accept people's opinions, right? And let move on. Yeah? I fully and just agree. agree to I disagree and that's it. You know, and I, 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 I respect everyone's opinion. I'm not here to change your opinion. Yeah? Because Dan knows what I talk about, yeah? Because I talk to him a lot of the time and I actually see what he says as well, yeah? I might not agree with him, but I see his point. I'm not here to change your opinion. No. Yeah? But I'm here to talk about what I feel and that's it. And if you agree with me and disagree with me, I don't really care anymore. Yeah. But what I don't like is this saying about, oh, you've got to act like this. You've got to be politician. You've got to be diplomatic. No, no. you're fans. We are football fans. And that's why we come to foot watch top mops and that's it. Sorry, mm. so I had to say that. Back to you, Stone. We're entitled now. to critique the manager. We're entitled to critique his exactly. decision. We're entitled to critique whether he gets things right with his substitutions. That's fine. But also, we should also back the manager. He's been here like less than fucking six months or so, right? So he should be back. I'm with all questions. Ten things months. happen during games and our manager. That's fine, right? Now we'll see. And I actually believe this summer, we might have said it all these years before and all that, this summer is going to be so important because that will really tell us if we've got any ambition whatsoever. Will Levy actually 
and the bold. I know it's Scott Munn now. You know, will they actually back them? Will we sell a few players to add to money from the Kane sale, that 50 million will have taken and all that? The money's there. We'll see the accounts produced in the next couple of weeks, probably show that we've had a turnover of 514 million. I don't know how much of that will actually be profit, right? But we'll see, right? We'll see. But to me, there should be at least 150 million to spend in the summer on players. And we should be able to get four good players now. And you haven't got to go out and spend um, 100 million on a player. Stell says, all right, go and buy the big expensive player. Fine, yeah, I'll get there. But no, no, Adrian, I'm not saying people, that. No, 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 Adrian, no, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. Okay, that. Fair enough. If I've if I've wrongly no, no, let me. Uh, no, I quickly tell you. I quickly tell you what I said. Right. By the way, uh, TJ, big up to you. He says, big up the panel, except Dietrich's. Yeah, okay, go, guys. <laughs> Mari, see you later. Yeah, no, no, what, what I said, Adrian, is right. What I said is, I don't expect Spurs, and I don't think Spurs should go and spend a hundred million on a player because I don't believe many players are actually worth that kind of money. I, mm. I don't think hard. It may be I a handful, right? I but what I don't want, what I don't want is to see us spend 200 million or 180 million and we go and buy nine players where two turn out to be really good. Another two turn out to be, eh, okay, not bad. Another two end up being injured or eh, for whatever reason, they don't they don't bed in. And then the other two are just dog shit. I don't want to see that anymore. I, 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 saw, I see that every year. I saw it last summer, by the way. In hindsight, that's what happened again. You've got two players that have turned out to be mustard, Vicario and Van der Ven. No other signings have been at that level. Madison, mm. inconsistent. Veliz, who is he? This this other kid, Bergville, who is he? Dragusin, mm. we don't know. He's kind of, ooh, let's wait and yeah. see. So I'm looking at all the new signings. Brennan Johnson, eh. Timo, the I think he's shit. Thing. Still, right? still though, do, do you have a more confidence? Adrian. In the, do, more, what I want to ask you, like, but do you, apart from that, right? Do you have Let me tell you what I want to see. Do you have more confidence in the recruitment team we've got? No, no, got? no, I don't. No, I don't because because because, 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 because I need to see this happen. I need to see us spend the same money, 180 or 200 million, and to bring in three or four, no more than that. Yeah, proven, I'm, the same. I'm the same. Proven quality. Mm. I'm talking about Rafinha, Chiesa, Caravascalia, Jack Grealish. Go and sign me players I'm like that. I'm talking about Vlahovic, Cambiasso. Fine, fine, no problem. I want to see that level player and only that level, three or four with the budget. But I know what we're going to do. We're going to go and spend another 150, 180 million and buy eight players. This this random you ability. that in the summer. Dump it, dump it in the squad and say, go on then, Ange. And the same thing's going to happen that happened to Poch, I can Martin think, Joel. I think we can Conte. get about 70 mil in for just getting rid of the dross. Rolling. Money's not the problem, Adrian. Yeah. My, we how we, we are the, the fourth money? biggest spenders in football. Only Man U, Arsenal, and uh, what is it, Chelsea have actually spent more money than us. We have spent more money Listen, than Man City and at, Liverpool. Yeah, on Davis and Sanchez, Vassell, Adrian. Adrian, Adrian. That's, Adrian. That's, look at point that's 200 that's million million. Yeah. That's what still is saying. Look at Arsenal this summer, right? F forget what we think of the players. Forget what we think. They spent over 200 million and all they signed was Declan Rice, Kai Havertz and Jury Timber. Forget what we think of them. Their plan was let's spend big, but only on players that are going to come, that have got some proven ability and see what they can do for our system, right? They never went and bought eight, nine players. We we bought nine players last season, including the loan deals. Why? How how do you how do you bet in nine players at once? Sir Alex Ferguson and Arsene Wenger, the two greatest managers we've seen before Pep in this league, they both said each year sign two or three top players mm -hmm. yeah. because any more than that, you unsettle the car. It's too unbalanced. Look at Chelsea. Yeah. Look at Chelsea at the moment. Mm. Look at Chelsea. Oh, I They've agree. signed. I agree. Nottingham Forest. They signed. 18 players, they're in a relegation battle. Look Spurs, what with Everton. Just, just sign three or four Van der Vaart level, Madison level, um, uh, Klinsman level, Jack Greenish level. Just go and sign three or four, and you know what? You will see Spurs mm. take a big step up. Yeah, and they're what, out what there. Those players are out there. And no, we're not going to do that. 
We're not going to do that, which is why I don't believe in this recruitment team because the club strategy is, no, 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 get as many players as you can. Get no, quantity, I, I, not quality. I, I disagree Look, with you there, Steve. So I, said we I have think a the club problem. strategy has changed. Right? It hasn't. We signed nine players last year. That's exactly what we did, Adrian. Where's the change? It hasn't changed. It's changed in well because like when you look at what we brought in from the car to the back four, Release. Timo Werner. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, but hold on. You, you can conflate you conflate youngsters you're bringing into the future to, to enhance your argument, right? Okay, fine. We don't know about Villiers. I watched the video of him. Adrian, we do know. We do know. Play, but like, we do know. We do know about him. At the moment, he has had zero impact at this club. So we can only go by what we know. He has done nothing. He scored a goal. He scored a goal against Brighton. In the Amazing. Team. And he isn't good enough to get into a mediocre La Liga team either. So Exactly. He's, he's, like, he's, come on. We're not talking about the league. He's are we? Like, he's like, that's our problem. Right. But who's the eleven that put out there? They're so young. We're one of the youngest teams out. So, there. Uh, so it's for the future. Maybe if, maybe if maybe if our average age is 25, 26. For Christ's sake. Adrian, the average age of our club is 25, 26. It's a myth that we're this young team. These are no, only because Son's fucking 31, you know. He most, no, Benton calls mid 20s. Um, Madison's mid 20s. Timo mm. Werner's 29. Vicario's not mm. a young puppy. Yeah, he's 27. He's 27. It's a myth. There's this myth that the Celso, how's he? 25, 26? Look at the Boy other Bieg? point as well. Boy Bieg's almost 30. I mean, come on. We don't have Still. this young team. We've got a couple look of young others. Yeah, it's a myth. Look, look All at right, this I'm other wrong. thing as well. Corrected. I stand correct. Klopp, <laughs> Klopp didn't have a big squad, yeah? He didn't have a big team. But what did he decide to do? Do you know what? Instead of buying five, six, seven players to build my squad, I'm going to go for two star players or what I know this first 11 needs. Goalkeeper, 60 million, 50, whatever he was. Defender, 85 million. All right, you're riding your luck a bit with a smaller squad. What did they go and do? Overjumped everybody straight up to the top. Two seasons straight run Man City to the ground nearly, where they only won it by a point, and then go and win their third season after doing the Champions League and also being in finals and that, because they went for quality, not quantity. Yeah, yeah but then... in the mid-season, it bit them in the arse, but they still got something to show for it. Yeah, but we then, got then, then, fine. You're right in what you're saying. Right, Klopp comes in. He first two seasons, he loses two finals. Right, mm -hmm. who's he having his squad? He's got Lovren, he's got Mourinho, he's got Carrius that cost him a fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. He he had final, player. right? But two yeah, yeah. seasons, right? And he hasn't had six months, and everyone's on his fucking case. No, you know, no, I, I don't think it's a case. Finals. Hey, you're, no, you're, no, one, no one's on his case. I don't think anybody's Klopp, on his case. Klopp I think took the, the cup most. serious, though. Klopp took the cup seriously. We put our B team in the Carabao Cup. We didn't I take I it don't, serious. I don't, think, I don't think everybody's on his case at the moment. I just think at the moment, we've just got a culture of what we've got at the moment, and that's it for me. I think I think it's just it's the result of the culture that we've we've been bought the last how many years now, and and and, 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 and I think I think and, I think I think TV, yeah, but people people can say whatever you want about right, Ange at the moment, right. but Ange we Ange is wait to see yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but, but Adrian, Adrian, it's what I no, said we have before. Have to wait to see what the ball do in the summer. If no, you're yeah, right, but, we have to wait yeah, to see. Yeah, you're right, but, 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 but and there's no point in being at the club. There's no point in being at the club. The ball don't back him in the summer. Then even but, on that, but Adrian, it's not. It's not just. It's, it's, not, it's, 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 it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not just about that, though. It's not just about that. It's it what is. I've been saying. How? No, it's not just about that. It is. It's not, no, it's not. No, no, it's not just about that. No, because if, 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 yeah, but no, I'm sorry. No, it's not. It's not because if he gets the place he wants, right, and he does badly, they'll just sack him. And that's what we need to stop the culture of. Well, then we he should be sacked when he gets the players he, need, he no, wants no, and he no, does No, 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 he needs to stick. No, they need to stick with the manager, right? And if they stick with the manager, right, and say no to the fans saying, no, we're sticking with our, our plan, right? That sort of tells the fans, okay, now you're sticking with your manager now. You're going through the whole, the, the plan. And that's it. The problem is with our club at the moment, when it goes wrong, when something doesn't look right, they just sack him. And that's the culture of our club. That is Arsenal, the problem. Arsenal is your prime one. Liverpool, Liverpool last season, 
Exactly. Most of the supporters, and Liverpool are example as well, Dan. Are tettering, are tetter out. That is what they were for about three or four years. And then last season, they take a step. And next thing you know, they're still Arteta out, but majority of Arteta are in. They're saying, okay, they've stuck by ben, the manager. How long has Arteta and been then at he goes How long has Pep been at Man City? How that's long has just, Klopp been at that's Liverpool? That's the, that's the point we're making. That's the that's point we're making. That's what I'm saying. And then he goes out and spends 100 million on one player that they know they desperately need to keep fighting for and that why place. Why they back him? Because they've seen what he's done. He won the FA Cup in that first year. They've seen what he's done. He's come through. Okay, mm -hmm. this manager looks good. We're gradually improving. Fans are moaning, but that's that's usual. Fans will always moan, even if you win the Champions League. Arteta you'll, got back to him. He wasn't always improving. There will be fans that turn and say, oh, we need another left-back. We need another centre-back. In fact, forward. do you know what? Actually, no matter what actually, you win, right? So, uh, with Arteta... Then the, the do you FA think Cup. they would have backed the Arteta the with a hundred Cup. million pounds signing those still yeah. if they didn't have confidence in him? No, they wouldn't. No, they wouldn't. Okay, okay all, right, all right. Here's the thing, though. Right. Here's the thing, though, Adrian. Right. Here's the thing. For, for us to have confidence in a manager, he's got to have at least. The Arteta got a little bit fortunate. He won that FA Cup, and then it bought him. Time, like he bought himself yeah. time by winning the FA Cup. Same as if Klopp. Ange won the League Cup. Yeah. yeah, if he won the League Cup, yeah, well, probably we would have asked for a statue, right? The thing is, though, <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing is, though, it, it, it can Ange with these players do do any better than top four? Realistically, no, no, no. realistically, can he do better no. than Conte. No, not no. at the moment. He can't. No, no. So, 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 so then. So then, how the hell does he earn the credibility to be given the backing? Well, he's well, got to. He's got to. Hang push. on, hang on. If he can't on. do any better, how does he get the credibility right of being backed? How do they trust well, him? Then? If he, he can't do any better. Credibility. I think if you start signs, how he finishes himself. the season. Whether hold on, and you know you've been to the training ground, right? It 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 goes through the whole club, the whole feeling about. The new manager and all that who's been here for like six months or whatever, how they like him, his ideas and all this, and all that, what effect he has. All right. It's, it goes down to it, it's more than charisma. You have to prove your charisma in what is done on the playing field, the training ground, everything else like that. And then if that feeling spread through to the board and the board trusts the manager they've got, then you hope for Christ's sake they back him in the transfer window. Right, not, yeah, well, and we need four players this summer, minimum. Right, minimum, just to keep progressing. We need that. We still won't be there. Yeah, but we you just changed what you said. In my opinion, but this Adrian, is my opinion. You, you've just changed what you said. You, you started this by saying that he's got to show them something for them to trust him. But now you're saying we hope they back him. Like, which one is it? Are we hoping they back him, or has he got to do something special? For them to truly say, right, we'll do it your way. Because he can't do any more than top four. No manager's ever done that at this club. No, it's impossible. no, he won't. He won't. I mean, so, so the got, the league so is now, back to what Alex said. Yeah, so, 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 we're going to so get Champions League because, like... Yeah but, yeah, but this goes back to what Alex said. Right, let me... Right. Right, look, Sir Alex Ferguson finished right. second. And then the following year, he finished 11th. There mm. was a massive drop-off, but they stuck by him. And he won and the FA Cup. That was three years long. That, after. Kept him, that kept him no, no, his no. job. No, that Adrian, no, 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 no. Adrian, in the beginning, in the first three years, he didn't win anything. He, he went no. second, and then the year after, he finished 11th. That mm. second season, when they dropped from second to 11, any other club sacks the manager, but they stood by him. They mm. trusted him. And look what happened. He became the best I think we've he ever finished seen. finished 13th when he won the FA Cup. I can't remember. He's 11th, right? The, no. the, the, point, the point I'm making is this, this is what Alex is saying. When it went tits up, they stood by him. Arteta finished eighth. The following season, eighth again. They stood by him. If next Liverpool, season... And Liverpool. Liverpool. Liverpool club. They stuck by him. It, Liverpool club. If Ange tumbles next next season because we've got Europe and we've got more games and the competition suss us out even more. Do what Newcastle are doing at the moment. Do what Newcastle are doing at but the moment. Still, let's say, no, let's say, no, Adrian, the question is, if we do exactly what happened to Arteta, what happened to Alex Ferguson, if the same happens to us, is this fan base and this chairman 
going to stand by this manager. Well, That's going to be the test. Alex is right on this, I think. Hold on. I think Let's go right. about Alex Ferguson, right? Man United didn't spend fortunes then. They had Giggs, they had Beckham, they had Keane, they had Skulls. But they, they didn't the sack the manager, Adrian, but they didn't Bruce sack the manager, back, right? They, they didn't sack yeah, the manager. They I don't did, care about that. They didn't they sack didn't him. They didn't go out key. and spend... Well, well, like, because people are saying, like, well, then, like, let's go out and spend a billion pound on players or some stuff like that. They'd, Man United didn't go out and spend billions. They had a great manager. Ferguson's a fantastic manager, right? No, but like, all the fans wanted him out. But, Adrian, all the... Dude, I watched the documentary. Of course they did. did. There's fans are like that the world over, though. Yes, uh, but when we club. do that, but when we do that, we sack the you know, manager. This even, like, saying. David well, Moyes can win... The conference league with West Ham and fans want him sacked. Yeah, you know what Alex is saying is when we do that, if that happens with Ange, will they stand by him? Will they ignore well, the fans? Look, they ignore the, the thing, fans on everything look, else except that. That, that is one of the biggest problems. And has That's to the point. Be, look, look. Get it. No, the point is the whole point. The whole argument today is part from the football and I'll critique Ange on his players he picks. And whatever, and the way we play in the system is substitute. I'll always do that as a fan, right? But I always love my club. But the point is, are the bold going to back Ange in the summer? We've shown oh, signs with that. With that. If they don't back him in the summer, like you say, still with quality players, they don't have to be hundred mil pound players, right? With quality players, then even I will lose heart. Even no, I will they won't back him, and it wouldn't we've matter already if he said because Ange go... wouldn't do anything with them. And he's already said we're going to go for quantity, not quality. I'm, uh, this is not, not is, uh, uh, but but this this is not what I'm saying. This is not what I'm he saying. I'm, I, 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 I've gave, I've given up. I've given up. I, I know I know what I'm saying anyway. I've said I've said what I've said. It's not about the transfer window. Yeah, we can have a great transfer window. The point I'm making is, is that if he has, if he's doing what Newcastle are doing, what Brighton are doing at the moment, <laughs> right? When they had great seasons last season, right? Man United are doing that at the moment when they had great seasons last season. Last season, are they going to back him? If they're 11th, um, not Champions League next season, are they going to stick with him when the fans are saying Ange out? And that's when you'll say because what what happens, right? With uh, clubs like Arsenal and Liverpool. Arsenal Liverpool will say, we'll stick with our man. We're going to stick with our man, regardless what the fans think. And now look what Liverpool are doing. Now look what Arsenal are doing. You see what I'm well, saying? We've yeah, never done that. Of course won't We've stick never with done that. Then, then, you, then you're never down done to, it. Hang on, hang we'll on. Hang on, hang on. You've got a board that comes in, change. We've got a whole, whole different management structure at the club. From Levy stepping to one side, Scott Munn taking over, with Yoan Lange. No, he's not director. stepping to any side. You know, Rob McKenzie is chief scout, blah, blah, blah. Dan Ange, and then Dan and Millie Jenenik, Curtis, Simon Davis, who runs the academy, blah, blah, blah. All these names, right? There's been big changes. And actually, Paratici needs to take a lot of credit for this because he, he ripped his. Oh, done well. Come on. He's done well. He ripped We're not Paratici doing this again, are we? Good players. And now. And now, all the positives that have happened recently, we've still got negatives over these fucking prices and shit on t season tickets and shit like that, which this club seems to have a, you know, a historical habit of shooting themselves in the foot PR-wise, right? We need to back Ange. He can't... Why? Because he can't win anything with the squad we've got. Simple. He can't win anything with a quality squad. He's not a quality manager. <laughs> That's like in your no, that's fine, that's fine, that's in your opinion. Yeah, but we one, don't right? know that. But these are opinions now. If There's he's no given fact. the tools, we don't know that. If he's given the tools and he fails, then you get rid of him, right? Fine, no, no argument. This is the, that, that, that's, you're gonna that's do the point. This, you're gonna do I, this with every manager we bring in, give him six months or a season, and say, like, oh, let's throw him under the bus. But Adrian, Adrian, you know. No, understood but what you I've said. said the question right at the start. Why can't we? Ex why can't we get a good quality manager and back them? Why do we have to settle now? Because Ange is here. Now we have to settle for having name a lesser manager managers. and just back name, him. Name, for oh, the come on in. Name five quality managers: Ancelotti, Pep, Klopp, Emery. 
Jimmy Nagelsmann, Hansi, Hansi Flick. That's more listen, than five, listen, isn't it? Listen, listen, listen. Really? I, I respect all uh, your opinions. Labor but, season, why can't I? <laughs> I listen to Robbie everyone's Alonso. opinion. I listen to everyone's opinion. I respect your opinion. But uh, this is why I'm, I'm skeptical and I'm hating Ange at the moment because this is going to go wrong. This but is going to go wrong. Like no, no, no. no. I've, I've, Adrian, I explained why I hate Ange. It's because of the fans. I'm not going to explain it again. You've heard it how many times what I've, uh, why I hate Ange. Yeah, but right? your argument's uh, just total BS. You're saying, no, no, but you, you know what? Offense. You know, I've, that's, already, that I've that just explained to you. That's not the reason. But, that is but, not but, the reason. But, but, but Adrian, you've already you heard what I've said already. Adrian, I'm not going to argue with you when I've told you 20 million times how much why I've uh, uh, hated Ange. We should stop yeah? exaggerating. But no, 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 no. Adrian, you've heard me how many times now? Now, stop, stop being hypocritical when you've heard it how many times. Yeah, my point is right after these conversations I've had, this is going no, no, it does yeah. make sense. You, you've heard it how many times, Adrian? I don't even know why you're saying that. It's ridiculous you're saying that. It's no, winding it's me up now. My what point saying, is, no, no, but Adrian, I'm not going to argue with you again when you I've told you, because the fan I've told you no. 20 million times about yeah. this already. I'm not going to go on with it again. I've told you a million times. Right. No, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> Let me finish. My point, my, point, my point I'm making is, right, by these mm. conversations, this is going to go wrong, right? Because no one's understanding what I'm saying. And all I'm hearing is, again, is when he gets back in the summer. It don't make a blind bit of difference if he backs in the summer. It doesn't make a blind bit of difference. It's about... Of it whether, whether, whether the, the, the main thing Well, you thing think is, if we don't the improve main the squad in the summer, it doesn't is, make a Adrian, let him finish his point. The main point. thing is... Is that if he has a bad run of games yeah, or people are against him, it's, right, it's and say and out, the board have to say no. They need to say no. We've got a plan. As long as we're not getting relegated, as long as we've got not getting rele relegated, we are doing this long term. And that's what I heard in June. I was told this is a five year, four year plan with Ange, right? Okay, it's a four year plan. Okay, cool. So if it's going wrong the following season after this, Right, you stick with your man, then you stick with your man, and then hey, I shut up. Alex, Alex, then I shut up. I, I do not get where you can say that you hate Ange because of the fan base. If you hate Ange for a personal reason, that's fine, I get that, but you can't hate a manager because of the fan base. I've told you already. I've told you why I've ate the fan. I've told you already about that already. I'm not going to yeah. go over it again, Adrian. You've, you've Let heard, me read this super chat. Me. Go on, Let me read go this on. super chat. It's been sitting there for a while. Della Spurs, big up to you. Thank you for your super chat, brother. Always a regular on the channel. Big up, Della Spurs. In the comments, always super chats. He says, listen to Angie's comments on transfers and Conte's epic rant. We will buy a bunch of players with little quality and Spurs will drive a huge summer bill, but the team gets worse. It's up to Ange to decide if he accepts this. And you know what? True. True. He's right. It, it, True. It, 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 which is why I said on Tottenham TV, if we sign Timo Werner, I'm Ange out. Not because I'm against Ange, but because he's accepted that level of crap. Basically, so you're saying... I agree with this. The Basically, saying the players are, players are going to get enough. him sacked. He's not good enough. The players are going to get the players are going to get him sacked, basically, which is what's happened before. Hasn't he's it? he's basically. saying no, no. What he's what he's saying is it's up to Ange to accept or not accept what happens this summer. Because if, hmm. if if we bring in a, a bunch of players that he doesn't fit, that, if we go and sign, let's say eight players, and he and he says, hold on a minute, this isn't quite, this isn't how I want it. But if he accepts it, then well, you've accepted that you want it then because you are now going along with this plan. I think that's what he's trying to say. And he also stated that no player will come into this club without me wanting him, basically. Yeah, no, that, 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 that was stupid of him to say that as well. Very well, he wanted, he it wasn't it, a smart no, thing to it, say. wasn't a bad call. Uh, but we know, like with Brennan Johnson, you've got, oh, he liked him when he was excited. I'm not having that. But we know that Paratici and the club have looked at Brennan Johnson for a couple of seasons, like what mm -hmm. they saw in him, but then spend 40 odd million on an, a non oven ready player. It doesn't make sense to me, but you know, it, it's I hope he comes good because we spent the money, obviously. You know what I mean? But he's accepted right. the terms, he's accepted the terms of what the club are going to give him at the end of the day. You know right. what I mean? It's like, you know, the manager, the, the manager's. They've already had this discussion at the beginning of the, when they started uh, um, working together, and they, they they've already had this discussion about what the terms of what 
what Tottenham Hotspur are going to offer and what he's going to offer. He's he's made it very, very clear. So I backed him on that. You know what I mean? Even though what I've said already about what I feel about Ange, everybody knows what I feel about Ange. But this is the point I'm making. It's just at the moment, like I said before, it's just, it, it, it's like I say, I've, I've made my decision what I feel about this team now. Right? What I feel about Ange, what I've seen, everything else. It's just what we're going to see next season now. And that's it. And he said this already himself. You know what I mean? I just know at the moment these players are not good enough at the moment for me. You know what I mean? Especially that front line. And I've got to say, based on what other people have said, and, and I've got to say this as well. With Charleston, right? I know I'm not going to go into what's going on personally, right? There was people that overlooked what happened with Conte, right? What he said about Conte, when he said he stuck, stuck it to him and said, no, I don't want to play for you again, right? And overlooked that. And that was terrible, right? Right, because if he did that to Ange, everyone would be angry about that right now. Yeah, mm. right. Madison, okay, I don't think he was that bad. I've watched some of the most of the performance. Right, I've watched it back. I don't think it was that bad, but I, I, I think I did, he did track back a little bit as well. But I've, I've got to say, there's question marks on him. And he Basuma didn't do nothing well. when he had the ball in this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I agree with he you. Had, and he had the, the ball thing. plenty. But, but Basuma, Basuma as well has got question marks on him as well. You know what I mean? Just a few. Yeah. But 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 for me at the moment, who's growing on me big time, and you know it's big of me to say this, Bentacourt is definitely growing on me. Definitely right, growing on me. You know what and I mean? You're right, and you're right because basically we know we know we have a lack lack of quality depth in the squad. We know there's a lack of quality. We know there's a lack of competition. Right. So we what do we do? That. Do we go out and buy quality like, or do we go out and buy We've gone through an evolution process of getting rid of Dyer, others, right? There's still more to go, right? There's still more to go. And, like, we will see if Johan Lange, with his data and analytics, and if we, we, we bring in more players that have, like, you know, that have turned out to be gems like VDV or Udogi, you know, or Saar, you know, we, we will see because if we don't get those players in, we're not going to win anything. Listen, so, I want to move it on. Adrian, I want to move well, it on. Right? We've move done on. this whole, we do this, we, every, every week we end up at this, this same go on, conversation. Go on, still. go on, move it on. Um, last thing I want to talk about, West Ham v Spurs. We've got a late night show on Tuesday. Everyone's invited back on for that one. That's going to be a cracker. Um, look, I saw the game today. <clears throat> it was on TV and, I, I, I honestly couldn't believe what I was watching. So I, I I predicted that we wouldn't beat West Ham away. I did a prediction last week with Matt and Brian and a few others. And I predicted that, um, no, on Monday. We did it with the Monday guys, uh, Iggy, Maz, JP, everyone, Lee, uh, whoever was on the show, I can't remember. We predicted we'd beat Luton, but I think we predicted either a loss or a draw at West Ham. But I might change my mind because today I was watching the game, Newcastle, West Ham. If you think we play with the high line, my God, Newcastle, they've got a high line and it's wide and there's no one in the middle. And <laughs> West Ham are just running down the middle. Listen, West Ham have gone 3-1 up. They're battering Newcastle. I, I thought this is going to end up 6-1 or something. Newcastle lost both centre-backs, two midfielders to hamstring injuries. One got an ankle knock. The amount of injuries they got in this game, and it was like they had no one of any... Quality to come off the bench. Half the players they brought, I didn't even know who they were. Newcastle, not only were they 3 1 down, but they 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 lost quality on the pitch. Newcastle won 4 3. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't believe the way West Ham imploded. And I thought, God, you're awful, man. Listen, obviously at their ground, it might be a bit different. Low block, Spurs don't like low block. Pa Paqueta, Antonio, and Bowden. When they were when when they were on the pitch and they were linking up, they were tearing Newcastle apart. They will be a threat against us. Mm. But what, what do you think about this game, guys? Because I thought maybe we won't get anything well, out of this. But, part, but well, after watching that, I think we can win it. But if we play like we did today, I don't think we will win it. So I'm, I don't know. I think. Still, mate, they also in, they yeah, also imploded so. at home to Arsenal, didn't they? So I, th I think no, they you can't. Can West Ham good on. They can be very good on their day. West Ham. They beat New Arsenal away, and they're not to make the cup. No, at home, I hope no Arsenal lost six 0 didn't they? On oh, the league, yeah, the league game. Yeah, 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 right. the league, yeah, they did. Right? They did. Yeah. So they imploded at home. Now, 
they are a bit like us, really, a bit Jekyll and Hyde, aren't they? I mean, like, th they could... You they know, always so, up their I mean, gear whenever they come I mean, against Spurs. I've, I've they got, always I've, do it. Yeah, I've got no fear going there. We've got a fantastic record against West Ham. I mean, we drew there last year. I think the year before might have lost, but the years before that at, at the stadium, we've got a quite good uh, record there of winning winning games. Um, yeah, I mean, I, they don't hold no fears for me. I mean... It'll be a hard game because it's a London derby. It's what you expect. But I mean, like, they always <clears throat> up a gear when it comes to playing us. Yeah, but and we always seem to fold when it comes to them. You say we, yeah, we might have this one day than that. Scared. I Damn. think with West Ham, they give us <clears throat> they give us a lot of stick. They I mean, do, what was, it? What was it? We were three one up, and then next thing you know, it was three all. They. <laughs> Uh, sorry, West Ham always come up a gear when it com comes against us. It is going to be a hard game, no matter what. And I with think... our defence, I'm going to say so. I feel, I felt safer with Conte with his shit defence than I do with Postacoglu with this world class defence. When we've done when well, in our last we minute, when, when we've we done well, it's when we had a go under Potts when we had a go and all that. They were, they were the days when like we were going there. We were winning there in their new stadium. We've got a very good record there, right? I think West Ham won the top three teams in the Premier League and they only beat us at our stadium for the first game ever at our stadium and this season as well. But but I think West Ham won the top three teams, believe it, Man City are amongst that as well, that we've got the most points against. You know, whether that means anything or not, I don't know. It's whether you want to read something into that or not. But, no, I don't see us losing there. I don't see us losing there. Especially after they've been spanked and their confidence will be knocked. They're not going to catch us in the league. So, I mean, like, you know, we'd have to lose four games in the last five. That's not going to happen, you know. So, this is Some what happens every saying, time, right? We're going to win this game. Yes. We're going to win this game. And we blow it because we're Spurs. Like, how many times do we see that? We get all ready to win a game and... We get all pumped up. There's no way we can lose it. And then we go in and put out a stinker. I think because, I mean, um, and well, you could be right, Scott. You could be right. But I just no, I'm, not, I'm just saying that's we see it so much with this team. And that's what's frustrating. That's why it's hard to predict what will happen. They're both. Both teams are so inconsistent. It could be. I could see a close, uh, boring nil nil draw. One team could win five nil. The other team could win five nil. Like these teams are so wildly inconsistent. What I would say is I trust David Moyes to set up against us. I trust our players to let us down. So I would predict a West Ham win if we had to do it just because I've seen it. I think with this team, not, say, not in past team, this team this year, how many times do we get let down after a performance? I so, think today, yeah. I think I think the crucial part will be us our, our striker scoring because I think we'll let in I think we'll let in goals. And that's the thing. So it will depend on I think it might be like a three two or three one to either side at the moment. I I'm leaning towards because I I just at the moment I've I'm just got no hope for our, our our strikers at the moment. So I think it's going to be more West Ham winning um against us. Unfortunately, I just I just think the 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 just being at the uh, London Stadium and stuff with the West Ham fans pressure and everything else and that top you know the cold room it is. I think at the moment I just think for me I don't think we're I think today just proved to me that I've got my concerns about that front three. If Son's not scoring and the midfield is just not doing it for me at the moment. Son loves a goal um, against West Ham. I know, but I think at the moment, I just think I, I just got no confidence in it. You know, I just think at the moment, if we, had, if, if we had a Harry Kane, if we had a Harry Kane that could score goals, I would be more confident, I think, at the time. But at the mm. moment, I think this system that we're playing, the way that we are attacking football, even though it's not great at the moment, I think at the moment it's just that's where my concern is at the moment. I think the difference with West Ham at the moment, they've got Bowen that can score goals, they've got Kudus that can score goals, they've got um, Antonio that's going to cause problems for our defence because he's very, you know, bullish. You know, he can bully people. Um, they've got the um, the the creator, the Argent. I think it's the is it Argentinian creator. I've got his name now. Um, who is very good as well. Um, the only thing I I'll think we what, can that, get that 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 Kudus is it Kudus is it Kudus? Yeah. 
yeah, Mate, yeah. He looked really good for West Ham. Today, he, he's going to cause. Mm. He's going to cause. He's going to cause a, a lot player. of problems. Su 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 is going to cause us problems. Um, he's a bit like Eze. Uh, uh, yeah, he's yeah. Like he's he's going to cause. He's going to cause us problems, Su because he's going to he's going to be um, dangerous um, at set pieces as well. And we're not very great great at set pieces as well. So there's just so many things there, and I know that Arsenal thrashed um, West Ham, but I think Arsenal got about them really well, I think, and just really nullified them very well as well. You and know, Arsenal so a lot better than us. Yeah, they were a lot better. Yeah, you are right, Dan. You know what I mean? So, you know, I I, I, I just, I don't, I mean, if we get through the game, we get through the game, don't we? But yeah, Paqueta, thank you, Luca. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, Paqueta, um, yeah, I think Paqueta for me, um, it will cause a He's lot a of problems player. as well. Quality, quality player. Yeah, he never got um, sent off against England, I don't know. But you know, this is the thing. I just, I just think at the moment, I think you can get at that West Ham defence, yes. But you see, the only person that I've got confidence to score goals at the moment is Son. Mm. It's Son. Yeah. That's it. Mm. I don't have any confidence in Werner. Um, you, I've told you about Kulusevski. I absolutely agree with you, um, Dan. He should be in the middle. But I've been saying that a long time, like you. To be honest, with you mate, I've been saying mm. that a long time, like you. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's never doing it. You know what I mean? And. Um, yeah, I just think I just think with the wing backs uh, being inverted, they're gonna they're gonna whip that to shreds a lot, so many times. You know, Moyes is gonna hit that straight away. You know what I mean? He will be hitting on that straight away. Yeah, and the motivation of West Ham trying to win the game as well. I just I just think unfortunately, I think they'll come out the pressers. I just think we'll absorb the press out a period of time. We'll grant the game, then we'll nick it by an odd goal. I think we nick it. Well, I I don't know about that because I mean, if we get if they get a set piece, they're going to cause problems as well. So I see a draw. I see a draw with West Ham. It could be a draw. Yeah, it could be a draw. I agree as well. But I just I just think at the moment, I think it's just I, I've just got no confidence that it's it's the front three. It's the front three for me that is just and the midfield at the moment that I'm just really not there with at the moment. And Never for me. Never and, if, if, and if we score goals, I think that would be causing. I think that would would be yeah, better for us. But, you know what I mean? But, at the, but moment, the other problem is that. our defense is letting more goals than Sanchez and Dyer. I know, but and we've we got take, Romero we and take, Van der We take risks, though, Dave. We take risks. Now, I can understand that, and I can take that. But it's just for me, it's that front three that is really hurting us at the moment. It's just I think they will be back because they've got a bit of pace and they've got pace with Bowen and they've got pace on the guys. Can I can I tell you something, right? This is quite frightening, actually. We've got one, two, three, four, four, five. We've got the sixth, the sixth worst defense in the league. So out of the top six, we are bottom. Uh, of the top six for defending <laughs> and for scored for goals scored, we're sixth as well. Newcastle have scored more than us, so we are fifth place. Yet the goals for and the goals against are actually sixth for both. So we're at, we're, so that 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 says that that says one, defensively we're giving away too many opportunities, and two, we're not scoring enough of what we create. That's, that's what. That's that's what and what are the stats for West Ham? What are their stats similar to that? West Ham are currently defensively goals four. They are twelve worse than us. <coughs> goals against they are eleven worse than us as well. So they're worse in both. Right. Mm. But they beat us at just... two one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but didn't show what they lost. That's why they're below us in the league, then, yeah? Yeah, that's why they're below us in the league. No, they They only shit on the shit other times, but we're the same. So it's it's not nothing to be negative about, as far as I'm concerned. I'm never bothered about going there. I, 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 I think, I think this game. And we struggle with one game a week as well. Still, remember that we're playing two games you think a week. It's pivotal, week. pivotal whether we get top four or not. Still, this game. <laughs> no, 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 yeah. no. We're because, we're going to finish fifth, and we'll probably get Champions League, and then we will. Oh, get fifth will get Champions League anyway. The way Aston Villa, play. Aston Villa's three points ahead of us, but we've got a game in hand, right? So mm. even if we draw, we're still two points behind. No, it's not pivotal. I think, um, I think we draw. 
I think yeah. we draw. I don't. I don't think. I don't think they'll beat us. Not a bad call. Because if I think they're going to go there and win, actually. But if Van, if Van der Ven starts, that that back line has never, it hasn't lost to anyone. So I think we don't lose. But if they play that low block counter attack shit, that's what worries me. That's this is when we really look bad. Like at least today we created. Like you could see the goals were going to come. You could see it. But against West Ham, I don't know if we're going to see it. I think I think one one or two two. I think we draw. Okay. I could see I could see a tool there because we've got what two clean sheets in about 22, 23 games now. Mm. <laughs> and like I said, we've got a brilliant goalkeeper, a good yeah, right wing back, extremely good left wing back, two very good defenders, and we are worse in defence. Than under the front, the I, front six is shit. Yeah, no, yeah. I, but I still, I still think <laughs> Conte's style of play would have worked brilliant with this team that he's got now. But would they have the muscle it. to hold it in the back, and we would have had the pace to get the ball forward? But Dan, he lost, he lost the change room because they didn't like the football. Remember, so yeah, would it have, would it have worked? But when you've got players that are playing it right and can play that style. Look what Chelsea did with it. I think I don't, think, I, I don't think this thing. I don't. I don't think. I don't think anybody would have liked Conte anyway in the first place. I, I can't be hypocrite because I didn't like Conte from the very get go, and that's it for me. You know. So, but I, you know, at the moment, I think it, it, you've got a good point. He had a worse team than what he had um, that we have right now, um, but. You know, it is what it is, Dan. You know what I mean? You know, and I know, I know we can say whatever we want to say about oh, we criticised him last year. You know, <laughs> when he was here, but we just got to move on from it at the end of the day because Tottenham have to try and figure out how to, you know, just where they're going to go from here, and that's it for me. You know, and uh, uh, this West Ham game is going to be tough. Let's just say that I think the next oh, couple of games, is. it's, it's going to be a tough been, game. It's a tough cup game. Tomorrow. And then, and then, and then, I think Nottingham Forest and, uh, and, if they beat us. and 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 not Nottingham Forest and um, Newcastle coming up next. I think uh, it's going to be tough as well for me. So, <laughs> and then when we've also got to play Chelsea, Man City, Liverpool, and Arsenal basically back to back because they yeah, will the Arsenal Chelsea game, in between. Ben, you know, we we've got a two week break before, mind you, not that breaks have done us any good. I was about like, to say that four, <laughs> they've got four games. When we don't have one before we play them, you know what I mean? mm-hmm. I'm, not, I'm not bothered about that, that now. No, don't worry about that. We I'm not, I'm not got, bothered about still that. We've got Newcastle away. I'm, I'm going yeah, to I'm that. Not, I'm going Newcastle. I've never been before. I'm going to I'm that. Not, I'm not. I'm not nice bothered about the two week break. Like because two week break doesn't make a difference. Players, it's good up there. Two, two, no, two, two, two in and out. Two week break doesn't make a difference in this team at the moment for me. It just, I just think it just. I think they are. Yeah, it hasn't really done any work. It hasn't really worked for us, you know what I mean? And I, I, I think like a I say, week break is not good for any team. Yeah, I don't think because you're really almost taking it out of momentum unless you've you got injuries. Unless you've got loads of injuries. Mm. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> That's right. the it, 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 it just shows you that just you know that this is this has just been a up and down season this season, hasn't it? Really, you know what I mean? So. You know, it, it, it's, it is what it is, guys. It is what it is. Has you know? it been better so, than you expected, though, Alex? I mean, like, a lot of... I mean, I predicted fifth at the beginning of the season. After the, after the 10-game start, I thought, oh, third, I started getting excited, right? We got the most points in 10 games than any team the Premier League has ever started with in them 10 games. And I and I got quite excited. Now I'm back to, like... Reality. I said fifth at the beginning. <laughs> Now I'm sort yeah. of thinking worst ways we'll finish fifth and we're still going to get ECL football. Yeah, but, I think but, but, I think Spurs will get top four. I've, I've, yeah, I've, I've, yeah, I I've think, yeah, Adrian, I think Adrian, Adrian, I think is is, is like I said, regardless of whether I have expected what I expected or not, it, it was still a a, 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 a a season that we had no belief. We didn't know what was going to happen this season. You know what I mean? Gross. The, 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 the season next season was going to be important, and that's what Andrew mm-hmm. said all along. So. It doesn't matter whether you had you I had expectations for eighth this season, we've done better. It was always gonna be about next season. You know what I mean? So yeah, he might have done well, but no expectations. 
you know, and mm. that's it, you know, and, and until we we, we uh, try and achieve things, when we've got expectations on it, and we continue doing that, I that's what the big do. Europe in one form or another, and like for next season, I expect, look, we've been there before, when they talk about projects, the thing with projects and clubs and managers is, whenever you get a new manager in, he should be given time, right, unless he's a total disaster in his first season, he should be given time, and then, if he shows that he's got a bit of quality about him, he should be backed. Now, depending on your club and your status in the league and how much money you got, depends how much you're backed by that to improve and like move forward. And I expect, I expect nothing less in this transfer window to us to bring in four players, and I mean good players as well. Yeah, I, I, I know we're going back on the transfer window. I think the, the Guys, point I'm is. Wrap that, it up. Yeah, we're going the point, the point thing again. yeah, yeah, we're going Here back we on go the transfer window. Yeah, mm. it's, not Listen, point. it's not point. We yeah. will be back on Monday on Tottenham Away, where we do our Monday podcast show with Iggy and Maz and Lee and uh, Mari and I think um, uh, JP and I think Will might be back as well. Also, <clears throat> uh, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone that came on the show tonight. Um, I've put yeah, the big up the followers in the chat. They've hung in there with us. Thanks for having us on. Big up. <laughs> Listen, we've had and 350 people as well. <laughs> we've had 350 people watching the whole show. Smash the like button. I've put a link for Dan's channel, Alex's channel, and uh, Ashmatic's channel in the thumbnail. So click on that. Make sure you follow these boys. They're on here every week, man. Show them some love. Support their channels. Um, also, happy Easter to everyone who celebrates it. And <laughs> big up. To Hyunmin Son, the fifth highest goal scorer in the history mm. of Tottenham Hotspur, deserves the praise. And big up you guys for staying it to the end as well, Adrian, Alex, and Dan. We'll be back on Monday, and then after Monday, we'll be back on Tuesday with another um, late night show. This time it's going to be the uh, West Ham game. So tune in for that one. Spurs away to West Ham. Another one of these shows. Uh, Dan, when you on? When you on next? By the way. Uh, quite possibly tomorrow or in the next day or two. I'm. I must admit, I'm quite random with uh, with uh, when I go when I go on. So within the next day or two, I'll be putting another one on there. Check out Dan's channel. Hit the notification bell so you know when he goes live on his channel. Uh, Alex, you got anything planned? You got any videos coming out? Just react to this game. That's it. But planning some stuff in the future, possibly, and that's it, really. Yeah, that's it. If, if you don't know, get to know Alex. Um, and then, <laughs> Adrian, I know you don't have a channel, but uh, pl plug your Facebook group because I know you've got thousands that follow your Facebook group, man. Well, you've got you got me at Adrian underscore Schroeder on Facebook and my Facebook group is Spurs Diehard, TTID. For those that use Facebook, if they do, you know, we always welcome Spurs fans. Uh, yeah, loads of content. Check out Adrian's Facebook group. Uh, big up to George, channel member, Elias, new channel member, A user, A user, Matt, TJ, channel member, and Della Spurs for your super chats. Big up to each and every one of you. Um, as always, boys, it's been emotional. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You can always you know get that from this with Spurs, can't you? My favorite Never comment dull. of the night was this, this bloke in the chat. I don't it's even been know passionate, is what it's been. It's been passionate. It's been passionate. There's one bloke in the chat that says, sorry, going to unsubscribe from the channel. This is too negative for me. So before he unsubscribed, I banned him. <laughs> <laughs> I, wanted to... <laughs> I wanted to have the final say. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm <laughs> to... Some people just can't handle realism. And when you've got a different opinion these days, you're just toxic, you're phobic, you're whatever. At the end of the day, everyone is allowed their opinion. And there exactly. is going to be a clash And respect them. You know what I mean? Just respect them. I, I, but but, but I, I, I couldn't give a monkeys anymore. I couldn't give a monkeys. You can call me whatever you want under the sun. I don't really give a damn. I don't care. Because all you can say is this. I'm just the main event, the professor of truth and entertainment, the ratings killer, the people's champion. And the people's guilty pleasure, and that's mm. it. And if you don't know, get to know. And I just want to get keep on saying it every single time, and that's it. I don't really care if you think I'm rude, and that's it. I'll just sit in your face, and that's it. I don't really care. Back to you, Spillers. I'm done. That, Alex, but I respect you. You know what I mean? But Alex, but Alex, do you, do you think it was a goal? No. Well, no, according to the Premier <laughs> League, it isn't a goal. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> right. Take care. Peace. Thank you. Thank you.
The first game we look for, Robbie. Talk them away. When we got talk them away. Talk them away. When we got talk them away.